Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. I'm out here living life. I'm busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Making moves and catching flights. So please don't waste my time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. We are back. Hope you enjoyed your week off from us. Hope you caught up if you are behind, tapped into the Patreon, and just also had a really great holiday. I am, of course, Armand Sadler, a.k.a. Vegan Chody So Poppy, founder of BNB, <laughs> first man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie, Chine Du. Uh, the team is a little different today. Um, our... Our beloved Miss Two Bs is outside, uh, out of the city once again. BT Awards one weekend, Essence Fest another weekend. I think she's in the pool right now as we speak. But my guy Will is here. Will, how you feeling, man? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Um, you know, I missed last week because I was at the BET Awards for the first time. It mm. was fun, hot as hell. Mm. Um, but yeah, glad to be back. Glad to be back. Always good to have you, man. Um, and listeners, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel for all visual episodes and YouTube shorts. Uh, also, subscribe to the, your favorite audio platform. Leave a like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Hit the podcast only fans, patreon.com <laughs> backslash stay busy pod for all exclusive, unfiltered, raw content. Um, and of course, thank you all just for tapping back in in general. Now, the full trio is not here, but we um, replaced, temporarily, we replaced Miss 2Bs with someone who she affectionately refers to as her twin. This guy I've met, I met four years ago um, through social media, actually. It was, it was an article he wrote about Kyrie Irving. Um, and, well, no, Kyrie Irving was mentioned in the article. It was during the height of the Black Lives Matter movement and just, like, seeing writing like that that was just so passionate and insightful just at that time really meant a lot. Um, and so I immediately followed this dude, hit him up. I was like, yo, like that, that article is dope. He showed love back, followed back. He's one of my most enjoyable Twitter follows. And the man has quite a resume. I mean, do you want to talk about mass appeal, paper planes, Epic records, spin currently doing his thing at big village. He's unfortunately a Mets fan. The, uh, you know, that's, that's something that I'm just, that I kind of just overlook because he brings so many other good, good qualities to the world and to life. Um, he is a very proud, probably the most loyal OKC Thunder fan that I've ever uh, bore witness to. But in terms of just music, in terms of culture, in terms of humor, in terms of everything that a dude could bring to the table, I really appreciate this guy. I want to introduce y'all to none other than Carrie Nixon. Welcome to the show, wow. Carrie. Welcome, that is, welcome. <laughs> that was a very, very... Humbling, humbling, humbling intro. Thank you so of much. Of course, man. Uh, you started listening to some spots. I was like, wait, for real? <laughs> Life is crazy. It's wow. crazy when, when, you, so you, when you forget stuff that you did. Yo, isn't it? It's it, wild. It really be like wow. that, though. Thank you so much, man. That of was course, nice. Man. That was nice. It's good to have you, man. How are you? I'm I, I'm charred a little bit, as we discussed. <laughs> you know, I um just came off of my, my grandmother's 80th birthday vacation. So, so salute to her. You salute, know, salute. yeah, uh, 100%. Bye. Shout out to Big Dog, my grandmother, Nathy. Um... And uh, yeah, I'm I'm feeling good, man. You know, the airport tried to hold me back, but mm. we're here. You know, I snuck some sleep in. You know, I <laughs> I got to make my espresso for the first time in nine days. There we go. Um, nothing like that. Um, <laughs> you know, I had to give up the Zionist coffee. Mm. Um, only only place Zionist we had, coffee. The only place we had on the boat was Starbucks. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I mean, I had to do my little oh. one two and get in there for my <laughs> macchiato. Oh, but hey, I'm not gonna hold um, you. It's, it's some oh days in God. the morning when I'm walking to work. I'm not proud of it, but I be sneaking to Starbucks too. Listen, I'm, I'm one, sorry, thing I, y'all. one thing I tell folks is like, you know, don't forget, like, so, so much of this is in the fiber of everything around yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. You, you have no idea who you're shopping with sometimes, yeah. but I always just joke about that whenever I see it. So. Nah, for sure. But it, it was just nice to be back home, and, you know, I'm, I'm extremely happy to be here. Shout out my dog, Ebony. Of course. Um, you know, we, I was just telling y'all before we started, you know, our relationship started as like me being the teacher and her being the student, and, and it's been fun to see those tables turn the last few years. So. Mm. Um, I'm I'm honored to you know just hold it down for her while she uh while she makes magic <laughs> <Yes, sir. laughs> down south. I, I I saw her um I just hit her yesterday. I think I saw uh I think they were eating dinner or something, and I saw the newspapers out on the table, and somebody dumped like 
a huge crawfish boiling that shit. I said, oh, you oh Enola God. for real. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're not, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, you're not at the airport hotel. You, you in the trenches. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the crawfish. I ain't had some good crawfish in a minute. Man, Facts. yo, hold on. Hold that thought. You been to two booths down the street? No. You got to go there and get the okay. Bayou Bees, the crawfish slice. Okay. Crawfish pepperoni shrimp. Okay. Oh, my God. That sounds amazing. Man, if I ain't fuck with y'all so much, I'll get up right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get keep. <laughs> Incredible. Let's jump into our Whether You Like segment. So, whether you like potlucks or just showing up, regular Oreos or double stuffed, Arizona or Snapple, Beats, headphones, or Apple. So I feel like I got some respectable gentlemen in here. So are, are y'all just showing up to the function or are, are y'all bringing, bringing a tray of food? Are you bringing liquor? Like what type of function guest are y'all? I'm going to let you start. Uh, I'm bringing something mm-hmm. always. Just like off the rip of like even me just bringing something for myself to share. Right. And then also if it's one of those, I'm definitely bringing something for the for the party or whatever. Nice. So, yeah, I'm always bringing something. Got to bring something. Okay. Got to bring something. I mean, I'm I, I'm West Indian. Like, right. <laughs> if I, don't, sure, no if I don't bring something, I get taken out back. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Even if it's a pack of water, it's like, mm-hmm. just, 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 just. Which is clutch. Just, just, just 100%. People sleep on the water bringer. Because mm. everyone want to bring the Terramana mm-hmm. or, or the chips. Mm-hmm. Some people mm-hmm. might bring food. The water bringer is important. Well, the water bringer is. Extreme. He's saving lives. People forget about simple things like water, paper utensils, mm-hmm. plates, cups, things of that nature. Like. Just just show the, the 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 host that you thought of them in some way. That's that's what it really counts Thanks. for. You know what I mean, because chances are, by the time you show up, whatever you bring in is probably surplus anyway. Mm-hmm. But you know, it counts. Yeah, it counts. You know what same I mean? here, same here. Well, we we had we did the Juneteenth cookout. Me and my frat brothers invited a bunch of people, so I made my famous mac and cheese, two trays of that. Um, they cooked the first one. I ended up bringing the second tray home, so oh, wow. it was cool. I was like, all right, bet. Like I, I made it. Right, people right. got to enjoy it. I got to bring some home, so that was clutch. You know, brought some liquor too. So, um, yeah, man, don't don't show up empty handed. Like, don't don't do that. Cause my thing is like, all right, let's say you didn't know you were going. That's cool. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you out with your homie. They like, yo, why don't you come with me to this thing? Da da da. Cool, cool, cool. But like. You could always tell when somebody just came like hand swinging. Yeah. Like, you know what like, I mean? With a direct invite. And it's mm-hmm. like that I really had to tell you it was BYO or something. <laughs> Facts. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and uh-huh. even if they don't advertise BYOB, like just, just you know. It's a courtesy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a courtesy. Take that initiative. We got to put the energy out that we want back. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So we can't complain about, oh, there's no community. It's that and the third. And then we showing up empty handed. Facts, know? brother. Regular Oreos or are y'all, this might be pause worthy, or do you enjoy the double Yo, stuffed? Come on. <laughs> it's only been 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Long show ahead, my brother. Only been, only been 10 minutes. Only been 10 minutes. Uh, regular Oreos or double stuffed? I'm a regular guy. Definitely a regular guy. Really? Regular. Oh, I, shit, it's something about, um, like <laughs> see, there's no way to get it. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I, 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 don't even like, I don't even like Oreos like that, for real, for real. Sorry, so I was going to say something similar to that, but I, you said it in a way better. Like a yeah, more. I just don't even like Oreos like that, for real, for yeah, real. I was a Chips Ahoy kid. Okay. I always liked Oreos, and I always... I like, know. it's cool, yeah. Golden Oreos is where it's at. Golden happening. Oreos are incredible. Now, I could do... Wait, what's the now, gold? That's the one with the... With the, with the white. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's crazy. Those now, actually are... I Those could actually, I, I might, I might could do double stuff. Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's front now. It's I might something, could do double stuff. It's old. something about the black Oreos that like they're like messy as fuck. Like, they are. They like they, they getting your teeth crazy. Fingers, like, mm-hmm. nails. Yeah, like black Oreos. Mm. And you know what kill me about those two? For whatever reason, I feel like they don't always taste the same. Like the, yeah. the the cookie themselves, I feel like it tastes different. Where I feel like with Chips Ahoy, I've been eating the same cookie for like. When I was a kid, I used to always break them open and like try to like eat the icing first and yeah. stuff. And then when I got older, I just, just ate the, ate the, the whole. Part. Yeah, I just, I just, yeah, I, I when I got older, I just ate the whole thing. Mm. And also, I wasn't. I can't lie to you, bro. I'm not one of those people that like. Dip my cookies in milk. Nah, oh, me either. I'm not. Me either. I used to let them shit disintegrate. Was, and I just couldn't like, get my head around nuts. it. <laughs> I was letting them shit disintegrate in there, bro. <laughs> this, <laughs> this nigga's nuts, yo. This nigga, this yo. Dic- this diction is. Un- yeah, un- he, un- he, un- yeah, you on some, you on some, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I just, I just, I just couldn't get down with that gang. I just can't. I just wasn't one of those people like, like to dip. <laughs> my cookies and milk. Um, I understand. I just but have, I just have very like specific eating habits. In but general, like. yeah, no facts. But after I realized that a lot of black people do that, and mm-hmm. not just like white people, I opened up to the idea like, oh, it's cool. Yeah, it's just not for me. <laughs> like it's cool. Like niggas mm-hmm. dip their cookies in milk. Yeah, That's a niggas thing that do. Happens. Niggas do. 
Niggas do. Niggas do. <laughs> so I was like, all right, bet. Okay, cool. Um, are cool. y'all uh, are you Arizona guys or Snapple guys? Snapple all day. Shh. All day. Shh. What's what's your Snapple flavor? Damn. <laughs> that's kiwi strawberry orange I, I was I just had a kiwi I was a strawberry. big orange yeah. guy. There you go. That's Girl, bust down. Snapple, that's culture. Apple is so good. Snapple bro. apple is a classic. Yo, Holy I shit! That shit never is good as fuck. Like Snapple apple. Why? And then I'm gonna mm. tell you a quick story. I met a girl who lived by it, bro. Like lived live by, like by a it. Snapple. Like she needed to have a oh, Snapple like, apple. Like, like that, that was like her mantra. Not sure. every day, but like anytime she like Something slice a pizza, man. I need a yeah. Snapple apple with it. So we went to get pizza one time, and I remember getting her the Snapple apple. I never in my life saw somebody react to a Snapple apple like this. <laughs> it's like the way like like you crack a beer on a hot day for the yeah. first time. That's how she <laughs> she for, she forgot I was there for a second. To be honest with you. Um. So that the, the, and I was young. I was like nineteen at the time. So that just put me on to like how many different like you know preferences people have. Because yeah, in my mind, like Snapple apple was like that was other. Like right. nobody was really. So to hear you say that is funny. Snapple apple is good. It is good though. It is um, good. It's good. I like kiwi strawberry, mm. but I really might have to give the nod to um to Arizona. I, I did you see what they tweeted re- recently? Like, like they like uh, people are, like asking, well, "Are you ever gonna go over a dollar or anything?" Like, and it was I like, mean, <laughs> if, 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 if oh yeah, the CEO, right? They, they, was, they was like, was it dope. is, it is that certain ones, but they did say fuck inflation, and like they like showed like a big that. like meme of like um. An Elden Ring meme of like a the nigga like a huge nigga with a sword like stepping on an inflation or something like it being like the Arizona. So who's that? But you know, and the Honor Palmer drink, classic. Oh my it's god, it's something that is almost ingrained in like American it's culture. Spiritual, bro. It's it's, it's spiritual. it comes it's <laughs> it. <sighs> It's hard, yeah. It's like hard to even like really grasp and like think about and like um really talk about because the 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 drink is so important to American culture. It like is. Honor Palmer, like let alone it's named after a golfer, like right. named after a person. Like that's <laughs> when it's really just like iced tea and lemonade hey. mixed together. <laughs> but it's it's literally that crazy. It's, and it's, I, it's, it's become more than that. Yeah, I think Arizona's really um damn, but Snapple. Snapple's a classic. Bro. Snapple facts too. When yeah. you open, oh my god, the, the fucking ah, you, might give, you might have to give it a Snapple because Snapple can error. change your life. Yeah. Nah, but I ain't gonna lie. Listening to your explanation for Arizona, I kind of want to sway that way, low key. Bro, that's Arizona's how convincing that bro. was. Because I wasn't even an Arizona guy, but like when I bro. when I went like seventh grade, like football games mm-hmm. at lunchtime, like mm-hmm. when I saw that Arizona come out, I knew what time it was. Yeah, bro. Yeah, like you, you just you just felt like you was gonna have a good second half of the day. And it's it's um, become like a staple meal, like bacon, egg, and cheese with, with, a, with Arizona. Facts. And also, it's a part of it's a part of it's a part of growing up. Because like mm-hmm. when you start hanging out with your friends and you going out and like mm-hmm. you don't have that much money, mm-hmm. and you're like, yo, I'm talking about like high school type stuff, and like yeah, like high school, college, like yo, yo, we're going to the store, like you get this Arizona, and that, you like know you're copping in Arizona, like little, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know you can always afford a drink. Niggas is copping Arizona. Five dollars. Yep. Niggas might Find get the mango. Pizza, mm-hmm. Get your Arizona. Niggas might get the mango. Mucho Ice mango. Niggas fire. might get the get the um the iced tea and lemonade. Mm. It's a, it's a lot of different. People might get the tea. Like everyone had. Like it's it's crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah. and it's culture. It's cool. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's it really is. <laughs> Actually, yeah. And they still got them in the cans, right? They, they do. got them yep. everywhere, bro. Yep, bro. I remember even when... Mystic got out the glass bottle game, bro. Right. You, you know Damn. what? Mystic, oh my, you took me back, bro. Mm. I had a Mystic in when you years. Start, that when blue you start... Mystic used to change lives, my nigga. Before, bro, <laughs> no, go ahead. no, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just thinking about even like when you got older a little bit, like maybe like twenty three or like twenty four, and you kind of had your own spot. You was going out and copping the small six pack. Of um, the Arnold Palmer's mm-hmm. and just you know have it in the crib like yo what you sipping I'm sipping on a small hope like an Arnold Palmer Arizona Arnold Palmer bro I don't know yeah Arizona that was a good question because that's a that's a good question that's a big one that's, that's a, a big question. one shit might d- divide the country <laughs> 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 and lastly uh, are y'all rocking Beats headphones or are you you staying home with the with the Apple products what say you. I cannot lie to you, bro. I was thinking about. I remember when I first got my first beats. I remember when I first got my first beats. I was kind of talking away from the you thing. Um, I remember when I got my first beats. It was crazy. It was like getting your first PlayStation or something like. It was. It was one of those staples in technology. Yeah. For for kids and people growing up like that are our age and everything. 
but I will say the AirPods changed the game. For sure. Actually, Apple wired headphones changed the game first. Mm -hmm. Then the AirPods, the wireless AirPods, like this and that, like you always look important when you have them. Those are nuts. <laughs> and then the over the ears, the sound cancellation and the sound transparency on that mm -hmm. is so amazing. There's times where I and my girl gets mad at me because I'm literally going to sleep with my headphones on because the sound cancellation is so good and they're soft enough that I can mm -hmm. like lay with them. Yeah. It's ugh. I think you might have to give it to Apple just because Apple don't be fucking around when it comes to when it comes to comfortability for the human body. Yeah. They snap on the next level. And I think that's just and then like how they sound is amazing too. Like am I, I'm always getting notifications like, can you please turn down your music, please? <laughs> You're gonna blow yeah. your ears. Like yeah. I do not care. These I, shits I is hate bumping. That notification, bro. Them shits is bumping, bro. Like I feel like I'm in the goddamn speaker right now, bro. Yeah. Like, Hold on, the phone sends you a notification. Yeah, yeah. bro. Like you, your shit's too loud. If yeah. yeah, it's wow. too loud. It's, it's, it's loud a loud notification loud, too. Though. Yeah, you're getting. I'm like, this is counterproductive. Yeah, <laughs> and it'd be like, it'd be like you've been listening to you've been listening to this blah 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 for way too long, way too loud. Oh, I and see. Tell you like. I you see. need to turn it down because you're gonna blow out your ears. That's basically. so. That's so interesting. I'm just like, yeah, it's lit. <laughs> they get a little aggressive. They are. Yeah. Ever since they put that U2 album on there without my permission, bro, Ooh, on, that was nuts. They've been doing a little too much. Wow. Like, nuts. don't tell me turn down my music. Yeah, that's that like low nuts. key racist. <laughs> my nigga, high key. I'm just saying, high key. How, how about you, Carrie? I gotta go Apple, even though I don't own a, Air, a pair of AirPods, mm -hmm. and I never have. No. Oh. Um, what, what you rocking currently? I. Right now, I'm on JBL. Mm, um, I've heard really good things about the JBL. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny because the JBL is actually like an in-between it was an in -between option for me because I had um I had a terrible, terrible accident with my Bose in-ears. Damn. And um, somebody knocked one out of my ear getting off the 7 train on the way to a Mets game, and it fell like Damn. through the tracks. Um, and they just, they just harassed me too much to try to replace them. Mm. The cost between the shipping and the replacement and the insurance, it started to feel like I'm just going to buy a new pair of headphones. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got the JBLs cause my sister had them, shout out Camilla. She had them and she raves about them and my sister don't play about sound quality. So I'm like, if these are good enough for you, they're good enough to be my little in between. Mm -hmm. Man, these shit's off the chain. I ain't gonna lie. They are off the chain. But I will say I'm gonna stick with Apple simply because I never really could get around the Beats, the sound of Beats headphones. There was always something missing about it for me. The over ear joints, I always felt like they were marketed. They were marketed like in an amazing way, like with the Serena Williams. And the, yeah, I remember oh when Karen God. Civil moved to LA just the to do that. Like that was crazy. Was amazing. It yeah. was unlike, you know, any accessory had ever. Amazing. Yeah. But um, I remember when I got a pair from my girl at the time. This is like 2012 when the boom really happened. Yeah. Um, I remember being so excited to go up to Target. I was like, all right, I'm. I was putting them in like a different bag, so I had no choice but to take them out the box. So I was like, I'm gonna try them while I do that. Mm -hmm. I tried them and I was like, damn, I hope she like them because <laughs> <laughs> they're not really doing it for me. <laughs> um, so that was that was my Beats experience. So I was just like, you know what, these are probably overrated, but mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, they uh, the campaign worked out. So yeah, I felt like they were just Beats were always just like loud. But not necessarily, the quality wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. the best. Yeah. It would vibrate. That's yeah. what I remember. I remember specifically getting into a dollar van one time. And I had her headphones on because I had lost mine. She loaned them back to me. And I was listening to, damn, I can remember this like it was yesterday. Schoolboy Q mm. and um, Kendrick, Spiteful Chant. Okay. And they got that huge bass in there. I'm mm. going big. And every time that beat came in, the joint would vibrate on my ear. And I was like, man, this is this is what Dr. Dre is peddling? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought you were supposed to be the go-to. Yeah, as, as, as a respected producer, engineer, all that. Like. It's crazy, but it, it beats are one of the most successful products. Ever. Yeah, Absolutely. No, bro, when like, you think about it, like when you step, I, I did it recently. Uh, it's kind of crazy this question is on, is, is here today because I was thinking about it recently too. Like, beats is nuts. Yeah. Like the marketing and like, how athletes used to wear them and like pregame, like damn, I want some Beats headphones, mm -hmm. bro. Those that shit was on everybody's Christmas wish list mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. for like five years straight. Just like me, because I knew my mom wasn't paying two hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean they were nuts. It was nuts too. Like the the price, yeah, the price range and stuff. Yeah. It was nuts. We were asking for we were asking for PlayStation threes on our head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
(laughs) pretty much in PlayStation 4s and stuff. Like, that's when shit changed. Like, niggas was like, yo, I don't want a PlayStation no more. I don't want an Xbox. I want some of them Beats headphones. Mm -hmm. The marketing and everything was so crazy. And it was like... The shit even became like a style piece. I remember my my boy would walk around. He would plan his outfits around his beats and just always have them around his neck. Every every picture he took, he made sure he put them up so niggas saw like, yeah, I I own Beats, bro. Mm -hmm. Like... Mm -hmm. Like, wow. Beats. Yeah, it's funny yeah. to say Gangsta, that. I was bro. just gonna say it really was a fashion statement at one point. Yeah, it was Beats like, was special. You had to have, especially when they really diversified the colors. I think at first it was like that classic red. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they had the black with the red engraving. Mm-hmm. But then I think when Karen and them got involved, it became yellow and pink and yep. teal and all these orange and. It was crazy yeah. because the ones I got, the first ones I got, my parent, like my dad, my my dad didn't know what he was buying. He didn't know which ones to buy, so he bought me like. The studio ones, like the ones you're supposed to be oh, in the studio. Oh, those like those real, with, like with the, the big thick one with cord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my shit sounded crazy. Yo, I, like the I cord. About those. those ones sounded nuts. Wow. Bro. Like because it was one of those. Like people don't understand. People don't know. I mean, people do know. It's 2024. People do know now that things usually sound better when it's wired and it's analog mm. and it's yeah. analog yeah, yeah. instead mm. of the Bluetooth and this and that. Because mm-hmm. you just, it just is what it is. It's just a fact of the matter. Yeah, sure. Um, so like yeah, that, like you know that chord, like you just said, that chord. It was a big ass chord. It was a studio. It was mm-hmm. studio. It was supposed to. You were supposed to be in the studio mixing and mastering with those headphones. Mm-hmm. So I had those, and like my brother, I have two. I have two younger brothers, and they had the other ones. They had like the the the, the cool ones and the normal ones. So like mine were like huge and big, but at the same time, I had the ones that sounded nuts. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. I, I I would pick. I would pick. I would pick Apple, but. You, you can't Don't, ignore Beats' you can't, influence. You can't ignore Beats' run. Yeah. Beats' yeah. run was different, bro. For sure. Remember, <laughs> remember when they when they did the pill and it was yep. in every oh video? My oh, my God. God, my nigga. The pill changed everything, too. Damn, Yo, you're right. Remember, don't forget the pill. Yeah. The pill was nuts, Beats nigga. product placement, as you're far right. as my generation goes, in terms you're of, right. like, digital accessories, like, Top tier. bruh, yeah. it Next was level. really different. And then they got into the athletes, and then <laughs> Bron and Bronny had the commercial. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Yeah. Shout out to music nerds who could spend like 20 minutes talking about beats, man. You know, I facts. love it. <laughs> and, and the intersection of fashion as well. <laughs> no, we could have kept going. We, oh, absolutely. To say yeah, the whole episode. I was just about to say that. <laughs> uh, next, I was going to talk about BBs and shit. You know oh, what I'm saying? But, mm-hmm. um, let's jump into this chat. So, uh, a couple months ago, literally right after the infamous Forever talked about Drake, Kendrick Lamar beef, Drake promised us summer vibes. And uh, most recently, C- Camila Cabello dropped her album C uh, XOXO, which featured two Drake tracks, Hot Uptown and Ugly. Carrie, how, how you feeling about the new Drake features? They're what I expected, actually. Mm. Um, I think, uh, I mean, it's funny. It's, it's, it's really fun to watch, I think, the discourse about what his impact is now and how measurable it is in the wake of all this. Um, because, you know, you have people kind of pointing to, you know, this idea that like this stimulus package power that he once had is kind of over mm-hmm. because those songs haven't really tracked like that. Yeah. Um, but to be honest with you, from, from just a, a quality perspective, like I wasn't necessarily moved by them. Mm. Um, wasn't really moved by his contributions either. They very much sounded like something he may have just recorded outside of the scope of all this. And yeah. we're just now hearing it. Um, that may or may not be the case, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's. For me right now, like anything Drake does is just kind of, I don't want to say meaningless, but it's just kind of like, he's just kind of staving off the inevitable where mm. it's just like, you know, at some point you're going to have to address what just happened. Yeah. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not suggesting that he shouldn't get his money. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Camilla Cabello was a Canadian artist, right? So, you know, he's doing it for the hometown. That's somebody that, you know, looks up to him. Um, but you know, the, the, you can kind of hear the the not the dead energy, but the middling energy mm-hmm. even come through in his contributions, and it's just like you know, okay, yeah. you know that's kind of how I felt. I was just like, okay, yeah. you know what I mean. Um, and I like when Drake gets in that bag, Me but too. you know, there's a def- I think there's a definitive, you know, energy kind of weight that's on him and every anything he's doing right now that yeah. that you can hear um in your headphones. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much how I feel. Yeah, there's like a. There's a lens that everything he does is going to be viewed with, similar Correct. to what you said. Correct. Like, the sexy red verse. If it dropped a year ago, it might have been received differently. It wasn't mm-hmm. an amazing verse. It was fun. But right. like, it wasn't amazing. But I think coming off of a rap beef, 
nigga's gonna look at that and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the Wagwan Delilah that we're not even gonna talk about that shit. Um, <laughs> nah, can we for a second? We can, we can, we can, we can. <laughs> just because, like, I, I just have to know, like, huh. did it ever occur to y'all that, like, that was not real? Yeah, you, you, so, so you believe it was AI? No, I don't, actually, but I'm, I'm wondering if that thought. Past, I like, never, nah, I, I, I never thought okay. that. Okay. No, I'm asking because, you know, I, I talk to, uh, you know, friends and, uh, you know, all types of different people. And it, I was surprised at how many people considered the fact that it was AI. Yeah. 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 I was like, wait a minute, really? I, I was I, like, I, I mean, I think that's going to be the pervasive conversation with him ever since Taylor made. Like, people are, are going to question if everything right. he does is AI. Right. I mean, that. even push ups for a second, people. Yeah, yeah. People thought, kinda, yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, I did. I, I think that's really interesting. But I think more interesting than, mm-hmm. you know, trying to figure that out is like, where that sentiment comes from. It's mm-hmm. like people are kind of in shock at how Drake is moving right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is really kind of anti Drizzy, mm-hmm. you know, for, for as long as we've known him. So it's just fascinating to see, you know, him discuss from all these different angles. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought the records were fun. I didn't think they were like groundbreaking or anything. Like right, he's got right. better types of records like Hot Uptown. Um Yeah. The with the whole thing about his stimulus, like his pop Afro beats, reggae stuff. It never charted crazy anyway. Like I saw Hot Uptown went number 62 on Billboard. I didn't expect it 62? to be. 62? Yeah, 62. Yeah. Hmm. But That's I, its I, peak? Yeah. Yeah, it, it debuted at 62. Oh, wow. You yeah. going to be higher? I mean, I was thinking 40s at least. Yeah, because I mean, C- 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 Camila is a pop star. I can't stand Camila Cabello. Uh, yeah, a lot of people hate her. I'm sorry for saying that. <laughs> it's just okay. Uh, a I lot of people really hate her. Like I hope her label is not in, like bro. through like eight different subsidiaries financing <laughs> the studio. <laughs> I never really tapped into her other than like... Yeah, you're not missing a thing, my brother. You didn't, wanna, didn't, she have to, that, didn't she have that song with Thug? Yeah, Havana. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just go to like a tiki bar and press your ear to the speaker. <laughs> and then like, that's okay. everything you need to know about Camilla. All Thug. right. Yeah, honestly, this album okay. was my first time listening to a full album of hers. And I'm not going to cap. I actually really like it. I thought it was pretty good. Mm. Now, she did, she did lean a lot into like hip hop and black culture. Like she sampled the dream Shawty is a 10 on did Dream she? Girls. <laughs> Granted, it's, it's a really good song. I'm not going to really? That shit's mm. hard. Like, I heard that outside before I heard Hot Do Up Do you know outside. um some of the producers she worked with? Um, I know Boy Wonder was obviously mm, on there with the right. Drake shit. Let me look at mm, it. Hard to miss when you got him in the in the building. Um, hmm. Hmm. I interesting. I didn't look at Dream Girl. I mean, put you on the spot. You can tell me later. Yeah, I was just curious. If nah, you know. you're good. But um, Dream Girls was produced by El Guincho. Jasper Harris and hit. I've never heard of any of these niggas, but niggas did Jasper their thing. I'm not going front. Yeah, okay. Um, she sampled SZA 20 somebings on a song called 20 somethings. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Damn, really? Yeah. How she, many songs is it? It's uh, 14 songs total. How long is it? Uh, it is a 32 minute uh, project. Decent. She, That's she, something I should have listened to on my cruise because if it's going to sound good, it would it would have been there. It definitely would have been fitting for a cruise. <laughs> Who is she for sure. is it would have been there. She is signed to. I don't think so. She Republic. is under so, Geffen slash Interscope. Oh, Interscope, wow. Yep. Fire, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fire, fire. But um, yeah. Um, you on Spotify? Yeah. How many how many monthlies does she have? She has this nigga. We'll get into all of it. He has <laughs> forty five million. Forty five million. Yeah. And then how many plays does Havana have? Havana has, has forty five million. Right, Havana has right. two billion plays. Two what? Billion. Two billion. Nigga. Yeah. What? Yeah. Holy shit! Like but, a billion would it be? Yeah, yeah would it bro. Be? Would it be? That's a big. I mean, that song is that song. That Shout song is probably God. yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's song, not even that's not even her biggest song. She oh she got God. one with Shawn Mendes, uh, so Senorita. Yeah, how many that, songs? That how, one how many I know for sure. Three bill. Uh, so Havana's two two like it's right under two point one. Uh, Senorita is right under two point eight billion. Mm, yeah, so it's damn near three. It's damn near three billion. Yeah. Senorita was huge. Sean yeah. Mendez was huge. Sean Mendez was, yeah. He, yeah. He it's crazy. He was doing MSG like whenever no, he was. No, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Bro, when you talk about it and when we were like, we're kind of talking about it right now, that pop weird Havana rap era that mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. came in mm-hmm. from like what? When did Havana come out? That was 2017. 2017. Selena Gomez and Gucci Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that era between maybe like, I feel like it started maybe 2015 mm-hmm. and it yeah. like ended abruptly though it ended mm-hmm. abruptly mm-hmm. in like 2018 maybe the end maybe of 19 2019. yeah somewhere around there bro it ended abruptly but like what they were getting off it was just hits after yeah, it was hits crazy. after yeah. hits like even the crazy. shit with uh, Cardi B and Bruno Mars Oh yeah, what's um, that was song? It, uh, um, j- there's j- j- dripping like and that. finesse. No, the, I like that. Dripping um, and f- finesse remix. Yeah, yeah. That shit was is... it the remix? Yeah, it was the remix. They, I feel like they had. I feel like they had another one too. Because, yeah. oh yeah, but please me. 
Oh, please. Please, please me. Yeah, yeah. But that was like, me. I don't want to say that was like 2019. No, bro, that era was nuts, bro. They were making, I, that's why when people like, ugh, people be stuck in it, like, people be letting nostalgia, like, fuck their heads up and be like, oh, no, no, music sounds good today. And like, blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, people be making hits in real time. You just don't be realizing it mm-hmm. right. until mm-hmm. it's too late. Like, yeah. Havana's I mean, a real hit in real time, bro. Oh, that's, that's the climate we in, too. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, look at how people are talking about mm-hmm. not like us and how it's being worked. And I know we're going to get to that, but, yeah. you know, in general, like the idea of working a record is kind of like, I don't want to say forgotten because there are people who do it and do it really well, but mm-hmm. um, the way it's not required to be considered a hit making artist anymore is really yeah. interesting. I think that speaks yeah. to some of what you're talking about. I think people also, people don't understand what working a record looks like. It's like the magic yes. trick be happening in front Agreed. of their faces and they don't even realize it's happening. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, nobody's working this record, nobody's working. But if you bring up like, did you see this? Did you see this? Mm-hmm. Did you see this? Did you yeah. see this? Mm-hmm. Like, they're like, mm-hmm. damn, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like, um, yeah, they're working That's that record. That's the record being worked. You don't even realize it's happening. Mm-hmm. You just think it's nor- everyday, normal stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, songs are cool. I, I play them a good amount. Yeah. But like, like I said, I've heard Dream Girls outside before. I heard Hot Uptown or Ugly. And Ugly, you wouldn't hear outside mm-hmm. anyways. It's a typical Drake underwater type yeah, it's, interlude it's track. Yeah, different, right, right. Um, he he went cool. so far going on that one. He did, he did. I think, um, yeah, I, it's... um. It's low key. I remember when she tweeted something about, Can't, wouldn't these guys just get dinner or something? Yeah. <laughs> Niggas like, are not like that. It's that's like, not the type of dispute they have in there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think, you know, l- listen, Drake has to do that stuff. Mm-hmm. He has to do that stuff. Um, yeah. You know, th- how does the saying go? You know, once you let somebody change your energy, that's when you lose. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, if he suddenly doesn't go to his bread and butter, you know, what does that say about how he felt about himself to begin with? Yeah. So, you know, I think he has to continue to do that stuff, and like Kendrick's saying, keep, 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 uh, keep making me dance, waving <laughs> my, my hands, hands, and it won't be no threat. Like this is this this is what you are the unequivocal number one at for yeah. this era, for this generation. Yeah. Um, might as well lean into it. Um, but just you know, to your point earlier, how much can he lean into it without, you know, coming back into this lane and and yeah. and and trying to make a some type of some of point of recovery? It's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Because that's, that's what's most anticipated. People are waiting for what the next true Drake rap record is going to sound like. The the backpack, introspective, timestamp type stuff. Like, what is that going to be like? What's he going to say? And honestly, I I think he should, and I hope he waits. Just, just wait. Because also, you got to remind people what the music scene is like when you're not as present as you have been. Like, mm-hmm. as much as he's getting clowned right now, I do believe there's going to come a time where maybe not everyone, but a lot of people are going to be like, I could use some new Drake. Oh, for sure. Like that That's just the reality of the situation. Sure. No matter how bad the loss was, no matter how much the memes and everything is, like everyone needs some type of Drake music. Like it's, it's just been ingrained in for our sure. everyday life for years. So there's going to come a period where niggas want that. And so I think he should really, as fun as these are, whatever segment of his fan base he's feeding with these, like, take some time. I think, it, it, and also, he needs to take time, and I think he also just kind of needs to, like, accept the L. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, however you feel about, you know, how you fared versus Kendrick on, on, on your merits, like, that's whatever, but, yeah. like, it was an L. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's fair to say. Yep. But then you look at some of these, um, and I, I never really know how much stock to put into these, you know, like jabs that I see him taking, like whether it's on Twitch or Instagram, whatever, because I guess these things are so easy to manipulate. I never know when it's actually him doing it. <laughs> um, but I saw, you know, there was one um, where I think he said something about Universal bloating those streams for that one song by that one guy. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, like, all right, so let's say that's true. Mm-hmm. Let's say, like, let's set the premise that this Not Like Us is just an okay song. Right, that was you know completely catapulted by this cultural event. You know, I don't think that's true, but let's just say that's the case. What does it then say <laughs> that the entire Western world just danced on your grave behind this okay song? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, if it were me, I would just want to be like, look, you know, I'm Jordan and I ran into the bad boy Pistons. Mm-hmm. That sounds way better than like you know someone who can't really shine my shoes took me out. He's like his button. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Um, whatever he believes, I think is it's time for him to just kind of turn his attention to like 
you know, how can I like take advantage of my situation? Yeah. Um, which to his credit is doing stuff like the Camilla Cabello. So sure. um, it's a wait and see thing. Yeah, man. Um, let's get into this single. So when I saw these names together, I was just like fascinating. And then I thought back and I was like, well, this guy has worked with pop stars before. So Quavo and Lana Del Rey linked up for a record <laughs> called Tough. Will, how'd you, how, how'd you feel about Tough? I didn't mean to laugh like that. It was cool, bro. Um, it was cool. I think Quavo and Lana, Lana Del Rey linking up is not that surprising to me, actually. Because Lana Del Rey, she linked up with she linked up with Rocky and they did the the Kennedys thing, which I actually looking back on it, it's actually hard to me. They actually made good music together. Yeah, and it was actually the video was hard and like Rocky been on his like, yeah, um, I don't know what y'all niggas is doing, but I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. Like Type of like wave, yeah, working on Skrillex and mm-hmm. shit. just yeah. doing, yeah, yeah. And now he has what three, two kids by Rihanna. Like mm-hmm. he's not fucking around. Mm-hmm. Like that nigga told he was told y'all he was different a long time ago, <laughs> and then he pulled off the the major ultimate heist. Yeah. Um, but anyways, back to Quavo and uh, yeah, I think Quavo also. Um, I think Quavo is trying to discover a different level of stardom right now. Yeah, you know he lost takeoff his brother. Um, or cousin, but like real life, brother, them, them them niggas was close. Yeah, them niggas was close. Um, and you could just you could just tell and how you know everything. And I think he's finally getting back outside. He's been back outside, but I think he's fully getting back outside with his career. And I think he's just trying to do a little something different mm-hmm. and um, doing something with Lana Del Rey. She's cool with niggas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she has a nice fan base too. That. We'll fuck with niggas because yep. they know that she's been fucking with niggas. So wasn't, wasn't she twerking with Sexy Red the, the yeah, other day? Yeah, like you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's one of it's my cool. favorite videos. Of the year. <laughs> it's cool, bro. Like she's cool. It. Like she's down with. She's down with. Like we we cool with her. Like if she if she pulled up to the cookout, niggas be like, oh, come back. Like mm. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you know, she not might not. She don't gotta cook. Yeah, she yeah. don't gotta do nothing else but yeah. like pull up. Like you know what I'm saying, we'd be cool with that, but she can't bring none of that hummus shit. Nah. Yeah, none of that either. She, yeah, you, she could bring some of the other party favors, but not that. She, she, she could be the water bringer. Yeah, <laughs> but exactly. See, water and cups. We losing recipes. You, know what I mean? you see, I have mm-hmm. a question for you though, based off what you just said. Mm-hmm. You said Quavo's trying to reach a different level of stardom. Mm-hmm. You think he's capable of that? Yeah, I do. Musically, or through some combination of his I ability think, and I think. Just through, I mean, musically maybe, um, musically maybe. I actually have a, I have a, I have a Cash Cobain and Quavo record that's really, mm. really, really good. I don't play it for you guys that's, after. Mm. That's the snippet that been circling around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's actually pretty decent. Um, but I think you know, even like acting and like even like even the sports, like Quavo likes sports a lot. He could get yeah. into he could, he could finesse his way into into the sports world somehow like what if what if we was watching a monday night and we had quavo as a guest a, a guest announcer or, or a commentator um like him joining peyton into yeah. um, peyton and eli <laughs> yeah like or like yeah even like I feel, I feel like he's done that before i feel like even like even on a higher level like take him to the main game because you know tom's gonna be doing it like imagine imagine tom quavo and whoever else color commentary in there um or quavo you know I feel like Quavo can get into acting. Um, he's he's done before too. Yeah, like, he's done like, like weren't weren't Migos in? Were, were they in Narcos? They was in Atlanta. They were in Atlanta. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. acting like Narcos. They made the song Narcos. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Love that song, by the way. Yeah. Great song. Great so song. I think I think I think I think he could, bro. <clears throat> so what do you I mean, I, mean I, I asked because I mean I'm a big Quavo. I, well, I, I guess I was more of a Quavo fan maybe four or five years ago than I am now. But I, I, I've always. I've always liked Quavo. Yeah. Like I thought I always thought what he brought to the game was was very fresh and and just fun. Um I'll never for as long as I'm on this planet forget the first time I heard Bad and Bougie. Oh my god, man. Because you guys probably remember this. It came out very in a in just this very nondescript unassuming way. Yeah. It just dropped. I think that was a Metro beat. Uh, yes. I think Metro did the beat. He might have posted it on Twitter or something like that. I saw Uzi Vert on it. This is the height of you could say at the time Uzi Vert may have had a bigger profile than Migos, um, potentially. Yeah. yeah. Just in terms of the trajectories, I felt like I mean that's when he had the Jordan brand commercial, and then he was doing all the 
Um, yes, uh, I, I, I remember yes. he sold out Irving Plaza yes. like back to yes. back night. Uzi was wild in that song. Yes, Uzi was. Yes, he was. Wild. <laughs> yes. He was really wild. He had money. I think he had money longer. That's oh did, my god, did, money yeah. longer was. So odd, was like, you know yeah, what I mean? So uh, yeah, it was. He was huge, bro. So I remember when the song came out, and I was just like, okay, this this feels like a like a fresh new Migos era. Like mm-hmm. when he tapped in, I remember hearing Quavo's verse, and I was like. Song changed. Oh, he's 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 Beyonce. He's that's, in his bag. That's, that's like song, he's that's he, song changed everything. Like he was in his bag, but also like he knows it. Yep. Like you always recognize when somebody r- realizes that they're a superstar. Yeah. Or they have that ceiling, and I felt like I was hearing it in real time. And then you know, I think it was like three, four months later, maybe even six months, really, when it really got going. Yep. All of a sudden, you're seeing Quavo on Jadena songs. He did the Cruel Summer. Well, what I guess what was supposed to be the Cruel Winter mm. single, whatever, with Ye and Gotti and them. Oh, Champions! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that song. By yeah, that's the way. a great, great song. Um, he was just everywhere, yeah. dude. It was it was very Drakean of him, mm-hmm. and he was crushing it though. Like yep. nothing was whack, nothing was corny, everything was fresh. And I don't feel like he's captured that ever since. It's, and that was 2016, 16, 17. 17. Yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a while. I felt like um, I feel like Offset really caught. So a hot he streak lapped, in he 2017. Him. He lapped him. Going into 2018. But then the conversation became about takeoff after that because the whole who left off bad and bougie yep, thing. Yep, so, like, yep. each Migo has got, got to shine at some point. Mm-hmm. And similar to what you said, for me, it got to a point where Quavo was having, like, maybe three good verses a year. He was on Mad Songs, but his verses I, I never liked. And then he would have one song where I'm like, that's the Quavo I yes, know. That's you know how you mean? shoot. Right. <laughs> That's how you shoot. Like, <laughs> that song with, oh, my God. That song with 2 chains, good drink. Oh, oh good drink. Yes, my that nigga. Hook is yes. Uh, nigga, what? Yes. Bro, nigga, what? <laughs> oh my God, yeah. bro. Yeah. That ah oh, oh my God. Like that's one of those you songs. The gospel version? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna fall on the rocks. <laughs> oh my God. Woo! Bro, bro I, like who? He told me how to say the word drop top. Bro. That song told me I don't say it in no other case. Drop cadence. top. <laughs> no hot <high> box. <laughs> no. Yo. I'm, 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 I'm going to play that song. Bro, don't. I haven't heard that song forever, too. Don't get me started about that bro, song. Bro, that song, that's one of those songs where you be like, when niggas be like, yeah, you know, he's in the studio and like God was talking through him. <laughs> Swear to I swear to God. No, seriously. seriously. Swear on everything I Remember love. the video when they did like the old, like they was, they was wearing the knickers and all that? Mm-hmm. Nah. Bro, this shit. No. Nah. He said, yeah, give me yeah. this. Man. Like they went, he went, it, it's Put just. Put dick in a rib cage. Nah, he was really <laughs> the way like. They was, the way he was flowing yes, on that, that yes. hook. Yes, yeah. No, 100%. That's he one was, of the best hooks I ever heard in my ever. life. No, it's just different. like what you said, Carrie. Like it was one of the moments where you just. You knew he knew yes. who he was. You could feel him. Like, I wonder what it was like in the studio. I wonder if niggas like I had right. I know niggas had to step back like I know two chains and niggas was like He's like, yo, you really killed Gucci that was shit. on that too, right? Yeah. Gucci I, was, yeah. 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 They don't make records like it's that. It's like it's like one of those things, like it's one of those songs like where if you like look up the edit, like Quavo only edit. Like, <laughs> like it's that good, yeah. bro. Like, no, he seriously. Went yeah. nuts, he went bro. crazy. He, yeah. went, he went nuts. Crazy. That shit is And that's what I'm saying. Like he was just trying shit. He was. Mm-hmm. Cause he, no. Like, what is that? Like, <laughs> he was just on there. He was doing his Cuddy, his Ye, his mm-hmm. Drake, his Migo. It was wild, man. Cause he, he was doing pop records, too. I Damn, think he did a song hard. with, like, Tori Kelly. Damn, that's hard. He, he was bugging. I, I th- he might have been on a Fifth Harmony song. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I, that sounds familiar. Yeah, like, he, he was, was bugging. He was doing anything yeah, he in 2016, bugging. 2017. But to get back to your question, mm-hmm. it's, it's been a minute. It's, it's yeah. been a minute since Quavo has been that good. And I do think, like, the Migo split, losing takeoff, like it kind of threw him off. I, I did like his album last year, Rocket Power. I actually thought it was really good. Really? Yeah, I, I liked it a lot. I did. I liked it a lot. It was it was, it was a little too long, but like m- most of it, I really liked. Um, but yeah, I think this song with Lana, I, I like that he used more of a singing voice. I think Lana's a good like backdrop vocalist. Like she's never too overbearing, mm. but she's like there just enough. Um, and I like. Quavo getting into his introspective type somber type bag like it's it's different for him I, I yeah. like that he's trying stuff I, I don't think the song is amazing mm-hmm. but I, I see what he was doing mm-hmm. and I like it I'm interested in what the next album is gonna sound like because yeah. he's, he's been like doing snippets and he's had, had a couple singles right so it seems like he's trying to get back in that mode but um yeah it was just like Quavo Lana because I, I he had Madonna on his solo album in 2018 the the I think the song was called like Champagne Rose Pop Rose something like that with mm-hmm. Cardi was on it too. And it actually oh, I worked. Remember this. Yeah, it yeah, worked. I remember this. And I was like, I okay, this. like that's kind of cool. So right. this wasn't that shocking for me, but it was still just like at first I was like, Quavo Lana, wow, mm-hmm. holy shit. But yeah, it was all right. It was it's all right. just it's just a little astonishing to me. And I thought this even before Rest of Soul take off um, transition. 
it's somewhat astonishing to me how difficult it's been for them to find their footing as solo artists. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Offset has probably made the most headway in that direction. Mm -hmm. You could say, you know, some of that is due to, you know, his professional and personal relationship with Cardi B. Yeah. Um, but it's funny, I felt like, you know, uh, pre his passing, I felt like people probably had the most reverence for the takeoff solo. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it, The Last Rocket? Was that uh, the Last Rocket, yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, it almost felt like he was the one who maybe even had, like, the most comfortable, like, zone to be in as yeah. a solo artist. Sometimes I listen to Offset and I listen to Quavo and I'm almost, like, waiting for one of them to enter the room mm -hmm. on one of, you know, the other yeah. songs. Yeah, it's it's hard um, to hear just them on a song. Yeah, and it's it's funny, like, my, my favorite Quavo song of recent memory, I think, is um, Shooters in My Crib or something like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um... I love that song. I felt like his, he, he, to your point about the Lana Del Rey song, kind of the perfect mix of his different vibes. Mm -hmm. He was doing some crooning, but he was also rapping really well. Yeah. And it's only like a minute, 50 seconds. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not even sure if he knows how to carry that full 330 song. Yeah. You know what I mean? To make an, a, a really lasting hit record. And it just speaks to how difficult it is. Yeah. You sure. know what I mean? Like, you know, being in a group and then having to, you know, kind of go your separate ways, you know, sonically and musically. It's, it's not as easy as it looks. So, 100%. you know, it just makes me appreciate the Migos even more. Honestly. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I, I I played culture recently and I was like, damn, man. Yo. Like, what a time we lived through. Like, them niggas were the biggest thing in the world 2016, 2017. Like, 2016, 2017 Migos was like 2015, 2016 Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. Like, 2012, 2013 Braun. Like, mm -hmm. them niggas was just t-shirt, call casting, bad and bougie. And then the the album cuts, big on big. Slippery, like, God damn. Do you know how hot they were? Call Casting was a World Star exclusive, bro. Mm -hmm. Yep. It wasn't even a real song for real. Mm -hmm. Like, they just went to Africa and was like, we got cameras. And it was like, mm -hmm. how many hundreds of millions of streams? Nah, I, yo, I remember that like it was yesterday, man. That was wild. T-shirt, T-shirt, my favorite Migos moment of all time. Oh, my God. Because that was, that was them, like, that was when Braun got to Miami. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like, we expect a championship out of you. I got like, one. Bad and Bougie caught people by surprise. Yeah. Um, even, uh, what was the, um, oh, Bad and Bougie was on Culture One, right? It was, yeah, yeah. Bad and Bougie caught people by surprise, called casting, it happened later. But T-shirt was like, Fader exclusive, world yeah. premiere, what are they going to do? And they all dropped 50. And the video was so hard, too. And they in the Alps, like, oh, Bro. man. Insane. Man, I'm never going to forget that, man. <sighs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to do like a throwback episode where we just like, Go through those albums and like recall that time, cause What's especially being in college when Migos was at their peak, like that was just oh, man, what a time. But um, let's move on. So maybe I won't be so positive on this topic, but uh, <laughs> Megan The Stallion dropped her self-titled album, Megan. Mm. Who wants to start? <laughs> Y'all fuck with it? No, really? No. Wow. Sh Meg doesn't make good albums. I agree with you on it. She does not make good albums. Like I, if I, if I took you back to like Good News, her debut, twenty twenty. We know how what that year was for her. I, 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 I wanted her. I want her to be great, and she is great. She's a big brand. She's very popular. People love her. But the music to me is the foundation. It needs to be sure, at the sure, forefront, sure. and the <clears> music <throat> since twenty twenty just hasn't delivered for me. I felt like she had so much momentum sympathy support to just slam dunk it mm. by putting out a really good album mm. and she didn't then you go two years later traumazine summer 2022 you know she she took some time off i think that, that was, shit was called traumazine traumazine yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro I, i'm not gonna hey. lie. I, I hated that title too uh, yeah <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it, what are we talking it, about it was Come just on, like man. all right like I, traumazine and especially because i'm sorry i don't really give a fuck actually her her lead singles were like Holy a dua shit. lipa record a future record and then she that future comes record with that. was terrible it was not good pressure licious it, it was it was I bad what is that it? song it's called pressure licious and i believe the cover Yo, art was like <laughs> i'm pretty sure the cover art was like nigga what pause but it's like semen dropping on a tongue or something what? like that I'm, i i believe i believe that's what talking the, about bro <laughs> yeah the, the, these are things that happened these are things this is that real life i'm not sure if i remember Karen, you hearing this this is nuts bro <laughs> holy shit yeah, look look 
Niggas got me looking off camera oh, to the wow. niggas behind there. Bro, I this shit is nuts. I remember yeah. this. I didn't realize that's what that was. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> Wait, it, what did he say it was, gang? No, nah, I'm not repeating yeah, that. Yeah, we don't, we, don't, we don't gotta repeat that. But anyways, um, so, nah. go, so go, going into this album with two, her being two albums in and God damn, like those mixtapes that she was calling albums and then changing them, calling them mixtapes. Like it felt like she had like nine debuts. So Yeah, that was you know, like, yeah, the label situation was tough. Admittedly, I went into it not expecting much. Mm-hmm. The singles, I know Hiss went number one, but I didn't think Hiss was that great. Cobra was whatever. Boa was like the best one to me out mm-hmm. of all of them. But then like I heard Wanna Be with Glorilla. And I was like, all right, that's a really good record. Mm-hmm. So like she's capable of doing this. But you also got to acknowledge it was with a feature. So, um, yeah, I, I played the first half of her self-titled, Megan, um, when I was on the, on the way to the city for some event. And it was just, like, song after song. Like, I feel like she just takes the same flow and forces it into different beats. And it's, it's a good flow. Like, Meg's delivery and her conviction, like, she can rap. Making good songs, she's not... She's not firing at a high clip with making good songs. And something that always makes her record sink for me is her punchlines are just so predictable and so basic. <clears throat> so I just, I, the, the, the one song I did really like was Rattle. I thought Rattle was really good. Like, I, I thought Rattle should have been a single. At least it's a normal the, name. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what the hell? Um, but I I thought that was really dope. I was like that 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 should have been a single. Like Marketing the the shit. quality of rapping met the quality of the production. But I I I went through all this the the Kyle Rich song that she tried to force. It, like don't do that. It, to it, Kyle. It, it, <laughs> like Kyle's Kyle's a good he's a good drill kid. He's Kyle, a good kid. Kyle man. Rich is doing great. He's doing great. Doing great. Don't do that to I Kyle was just Rich. Like, all right, man. You're just trying shit now. All right, trying to whatever. throw it to the wall, make it stick like what? <laughs> <laughs> like cement. So it's funny you say that because I so I I that's what I downloaded <laughs> on my flight mm-hmm. really? to Megan? go to Florida, right? To get on a cruise. You did that? I downloaded the album. Um, because I I'm always rooting for Meg. Like yeah. Meg is a talent. She's a serious talent. Yeah. She could really rap. Um, and when she when 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 sorry. she does get her her skill set to align. She's capable of making a really good song. Mm. Um, but to your point, it doesn't happen often enough yeah. for me. Yeah. It doesn't happen often enough for me. And I talk about this with my friends all the time because, you know, I'm always like trying to gauge like whether her visibility has outpaced, you know, oh, her has. output. One thousand percent. Um one thousand percent. And at first it felt like it was way outpacing it. And then it started to feel like it was catching up a little yeah. bit. You know, big old freak, savage. I thought savage. Savage, you could take the hit element of Savage completely out of it. I remember the first time I heard Savage, quarantine, nobody's going anywhere. Mm-hmm. I snuck out like to go to the supermarket real quick, and I heard Savage, and I was like, this is an amazing song. It was a dope, dope record. Like, this is an amazing dope song. Record. Like, for someone who is still really, really rough around the edges in terms of her ability to craft the record, yeah. I was like, this is serious. Yeah. Um, But, like, that happens, and then I felt like she takes seven steps back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I was pretty much aligned with everything you're saying. And it's funny, when you mentioned... The first half of the album, that's where she lost me too. Mm-hmm. So I'm on the flight and I'm listening and I'm like, I never liked his. Yeah. Like I thought it was a cool moment. And obviously it was nice that she, you know, it, it was fun to look in hindsight at how she may have like jump started this whole thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I I'm not a fan of the rapping on there. Like mm-hmm. I can't, where am I playing that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's the other thing. You don't hear Meg stuff outside. Yeah. And she's the all. she's the outside she's the girl. Quintessential. Not she's at all. always twerking and drinking. Like, like she has a season named after her. Yeah. You know what I'm I mean? like, bro, so. how how is it hot girl summer? We're not hearing the hot girl in the summer. Mm-hmm. No, unless 100%. it's with Glorilla. Right, hundred percent. So when I when I went through these records, I always like save the ones that I like yeah. think are keepers and whatnot. Yeah. And the ones that I really think have like the real, real so staying ass. power. So no, no, no. I, and it's funny they the changed cover. it from something. They that, changed it multiple that, times. They changed this from what something the fuck? that was Is she uns- coming out the unsightly, egg? bro. They changed it from something that was unsightly. At least this matches with the song titles. You got hiss, rattle, cobra. Like it, mm-hmm. there's a little thematic kind of cohesion there that's nice. But then I look at my favorite section of the album, all features. It's, just, it's the back half. All features. Yeah. Glorilla, UGK. I think the Paper Together song is amazing. That's one of my favorite songs of the year. Off for it. Uh, the which one? Paper, the UGK collab. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good great one. Great song. And one. I felt like the way she came in rapping on that song was yeah. actually like it felt in harmony with the beat and mm-hmm. everything. But Victoria Monet, 
then Bake Crit and Buddha Bless. You know, even um earlier on in the album, like I I I kept the Kyle Rich song just because it's a Kyle Rich song. Yeah. Featuring Megan. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like I wouldn't have put that on my album if yeah. I was her. But to your point, like I'm I'm still waiting for and this album, like I like more Cash than Cobain. I like more. <laughs> that would have been nice. <laughs> I do like this album probably more than her previous ones, which isn't necessarily saying much personally. Yeah. Um, because I never really I thought Traumazine had some. It had a couple of high notes, but I think as an album, it just kind of felt thrown together. Yeah. Good news, same thing. I was not a fan of Fever. It felt like it lacked that Megan kind of, yeah. you know, juice and sauce. But um, I'm still waiting for her to have that project where it's like. You know, in 20 years, we're going to have to talk about this yeah. when we talk about, you know, the 2020s. I'm not sure if she has that. She definitely has the record. Mm -hmm. Savage, you know, to a lesser degree, but I think still necessary. Big old freak. Yeah. Um, Cash and, with the baby. Uh, there we go. The, the baby joint. I was yeah. trying to figure that out. But I'm still waiting because she has. It's always frustrating to me when, like, I'm an album guy. Like, yeah, I'm always going to take someone who can make an album from front to back. It doesn't have to have no skips. Right, like I understand that that may be asking too much in yeah. in the streaming age when everything is eighteen to twenty two songs. Yeah, but like, give me something where it's like I could live with this in different ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I could drive to it. I could throw it on in the house. I yeah. could throw it on when I'm da da da. And I, I I just don't feel like she has that. Now, granted, obviously there are gonna be some songs that I just hear differently because I'm a dude. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean? Like I was just on a cruise with my cousins, and we always talking about music, super music heads. So they playing the album in the room. And funny enough, a couple of the songs that I skipped, like, no way I would never keep that. That was their anthem. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, well, this is actually for y'all. So yeah. that makes sense. You know what the, I mean? The, so I'm always taking that into account, too. What's that? The, 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 these were lady cousins? Yes. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, girl cousins. I should have specified. Yeah, that's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> hey, 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 but, hey, 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 I'm, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so um, I'm always, you know, thinking of that perspective, too. Yeah. Um, same way, you know, they're going to hear a Benny the Butcher song and be like, this is noise. Scaring the host. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, uh, but I think just strictly from a hip-hop and a rap perspective, um, which is how I, you know, try to try to uh, experience Meg, I'm just waiting for her. Like, I'm not, really, I'm not even asking for the blueprint. Like, just, yeah. just, give me, uh, just give me my turn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just give me, uh, you know what I mean? Like, give me something where it's like, you know, we can't. We can't write this chapter without you. Yeah. Um. And I'm so I'm patiently waiting on that. And I don't want to give, you know, something that you know may not necessarily be of that standing that stamp. Of course. Just to give it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I'm, I I want to hold out until it's like, oh no, I actually like, I can't I can't get in the car without this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I I agree. I think future wise, she'd be like all over the place too. Like I, I actually did re really like the Victoria Monet song. I thought that was good song. I thought it was pretty dope. That section is very strong. Yeah. Like um, accent to paper together to spin. Yeah. Downstairs DJ. Accent is great. I think accent nigga. is great. Downstairs DJ. When 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 I looked at the song title, I was like, <laughs> Is she about to? Yeah. Same. And then I play it, <laughs> and it is in an is an ode to her playing with her pussy. Mm -hmm. No problem. Very creative. Not for me, obviously. Sure. Like, not something I'ma hear and be like, "Oh yeah, this, this, this my bag." This, mm -hmm. I, I felt this. I for sure I was saved like, it. God though. damn, and, and you know, I, <laughs> I, 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 I got the I green never... check for me. You said what? <laughs> I got the green check. Oh, for you me. different. You different. <laughs> but I, I, it's like I'm, I'm never gonna be the guy to be like, "Oh, it's too much sex raps." Because like, well, why, why are we policing women who want to rap sure. about sex? Sure. It's cool to me. Lotto does it well. Sexy Red does it well. Like, you know. But I feel like with Meg, her, and I, I'm not looking for her to be substance concept mm -hmm, mm -hmm. storytelling but mm -hmm. i do need a little more mm. like most of these songs is like yeah my, my pussy my ass yeah, fucking yeah. it's you know again there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. but the stature that she is elevated to mm -hmm. she, she's got to bring a little more yeah because I, I feel like she isolates what her fan base can be yeah by not giving more and i like that she tries like a, a song like worthy that, that was like more singing yeah Pop stuff. Yeah. I, I felt like the hook was a little too basic. Um, but it's good that she tries this stuff. She just can't really do stuff outside of yeah. rapping on like southern upbeat type or mm -hmm. mid-tempo type beats with that same flow. And it's it, it's it's tough, man. It's tough. Yeah, it's um, it, it the change of pace is what I'm looking for for her. Yeah. And I think that's what I love about Big Old Freak so much. I mm -hmm. I maintain, you can ask Ed when she get back here. I I tell her all the time, she has not made a better song since. I would say, I would argue yeah. that, like, in terms of just, like, from a technical standpoint, um, from a, you know, potential hit standpoint, like, if she if she drops that today with her current profile, oh, be I mean, she eats yeah. for, for, she eats all year off that. Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, when you listen to how she, even her delivery on that song, like, you know, she does the double time thing and then she kind of just pulls it out and just Start lets the singing, beat, yeah. you know, she's kind of riding the beat. Um, and I feel like, you know, she got into a really successful pocket in that the baby era where she was kind of doing that da 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 And then she kind of like kept just trying to push that model. Yeah. Um, instead of, you know, changing pace and shifting it up a little bit. Um, so that's what I'm looking for for her because she, she has the talent to do it. And to your point, you know, I think if you want to be one of the greats, um, you gotta, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like being a guard in basketball. Like if you go at one speed, you're never gonna get to where you want to get to. Yeah. So uh, those are our thoughts on Megan The Stallion. Megan, um, of course, listeners always let us know how you feel. Social media. Uh, if you don't want to argue, you could text me on the side. If if you hate my takes, you can let me know that too. Um, I do acknowledge again, like I said, like music like that may not necessarily be for me, but. I also kind of don't like saying stuff isn't for me and like it kind of makes me feel like I shouldn't be critiquing it cuz like music is music you know even if the subject matters for other people or oh, oh, it's a woman rapper like I feel like you know it's still okay for me to have a perspective on it but Agreed. yeah the album just wasn't really moving me um uh, but but the, the, there are some highlights there definitely are some highlights so that's that let's jump into this lunch break a lot of sports shit to talk about signings trades Sons getting drafted places. Um, Carrie, what was your favorite? I mean, I feel like I know your answer. <laughs> who, That's who, too easy. Who I'm not going to do it like that. What's your favorite free agency move that didn't have to do with the Thunder? Didn't have to do with the Thunder. I would say, um, damn, that's a good one. I'm going to say Clay to the Mavs. Mm. I like that move a lot um, for a couple of reasons. I think. Number one, it enables the Mavs to kind of play the style of hoop that they're actually designed to, like, play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think it's going to be really fun. You know, you watched them last year. Um, not even last year. You watched them in the playoffs, and you've got Luka, like, <laughs> in the lane, drawing two, kicking to, like, Josh Green mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, Derry Jones Jr. Yeah. and P.J. Washington, who who had, like, a flash in the pan, you know, shooting uh, uh, percentage that series. but. Yeah. That's not necessarily the type of guy you want your your two all world you know penetrators kicking out to. Yeah. So, um, I felt like I love those moves where it's like it might not be the big splash or it might not be the most expensive play. Yeah, but it's a thing that that helps your team be the best version of itself. Yeah. So I feel like Clay, you know, granted his knees agree with him. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like he's gonna help that team. He's just gonna make everybody better just by being there. Yeah. Um, you know, because now you can't like. When Luca gets two feet in the paint, you can't converge on him, uh-huh. you know, because you got a guy that's got four rings yep. with the flick of that wrist mm-hmm. waiting out there for the kick. So um, I'm really excited to see how that goes, and I'm excited to beat him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you know what Clay has done to my to my legacy as a fan. So uh, yes. um, you know, I'm I'm, I'm I'm excited to kick his ass on a in a different jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it would be that one, or if not, uh, Mike Kyle Bridges to the to the Knicks was just one of those like. I can't believe the NBA is not scripted. Bro, you know what I insane. mean? <laughs> insane. Yeah, I, I, I too like Clay to the Mavs. I think him coming off of injury, people expected him to step back into that second option role mm-hmm. and be that Robin to Steph Curry's Batman. He just he doesn't have it in him anymore. So I think you take that pressure off him a little bit by being a third option in in, in uh, Dallas, and then you have those games where like PJ Washington can go off. So Clay don't necessarily need to put up. 18, 17. Mm-hmm. Clay could score 12, and like that's mm-hmm. good enough if PJ could give you 19, something like that. Um, I, th- I think it's a good fit, a good veteran presence for that team. It's a really young team. Like, uh, obviously, Kyrie yeah. brings a certain presence to them, yeah. too. And Luke has been in the league for a minute, but like he hasn't won a championship yet. Like, he, he's also a bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, erratic and stuff. Like, I, th- yeah. I, think, I think he's a good leader, but I yeah. think bringing someone with that championship pedigree yeah. can you know only benefit that, them. You know what that move reminds me of a lot is. Ray Allen to the Heat. Mm, yeah. Mm. That's a good one. That's, back a, good, that's in, a good one. That's back a really in, good comparison. Um, yeah. Back when he was with the Celtics. Mm-hmm. You know, they won some chips or won a chip. Yeah. Um, Should have had a, a, maybe had more. I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, <laughs> he comes through. He was a, he was a championship player mm-hmm. Um, going to a team, Um, you know, that was looking to win the championships and, and really looking to lock in. And I feel like what both of you guys are saying, um, there's going to be games where Clay doesn't have more than maybe 10 dribbles mm-hmm. and it's hit about like six th- yeah. killer threes <laughs> yeah. just from kickouts yeah. Yeah. and it's going to be I'm telling you it's going to it's going to be like Ray Allen on the it's going to be like Ray Allen on the heat mm-hmm. maybe like a little bit different obviously yeah. um but 
I can see I can I, I, that comparison popped up in my mind when you're just one. just thinking about Clay and how the shooter he is and the winner he is. Also, people don't understand like Clay's like six seven. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a, he's a big dude. Like yeah. it's not like some like little mm-hmm. shooter over there or this and that. Like mm-hmm. he's a big dude. He can rise up. He's gonna be able to hit. He's gonna be able to hit a lot of important shots if he stays healthy. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be a lot of games where he's hitting maybe five to five to eight threes or maybe not eight, but like maybe like maybe it's gonna be games where he's gonna be hitting three to three to six threes. Mm-hmm. And you're just gonna, it's gonna be killer. They're gonna be backbreaker bang yeah. threes. <laughs> like you're gonna be like, damn, like yeah. what the fuck? We like where was he at? Like yeah. he's gonna be chilling, bro. He's gonna be running around that three point line. Bugging it's up. gonna be nasty. Him, Kyrie, and then lively, and then he sh- I'm trying to tell you the lively rebound kick out threes mm-hmm. are gonna be killing you yeah, guys. Yeah, he's gonna always be killing gonna have people, a shooter bro. on the floor. He's, he's gonna be he's killing gonna people, be floating bro. around that three point line. Like gonna, I'm trying to tell you, he's gonna be like Bosch when Bosch got the rebound, kicked it out there to to right. Yeah. Yeah, and Clay is one of the great off ball shooters mm-hmm. too. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you he's gonna he's the mm-hmm. way he's gonna be curling off of these mm-hmm. pin downs and mm-hmm. just just moving with you, to being mm-hmm. that perfect spot on that second chance. If he's and, healthy, and and what's most maybe not most, but what's really fun about it is also like we get to see him go against that. Yeah, you know, I think so much has been made about their bromance and the fact that they won four rings together that like. I think Clay might hold Steph in contempt a little bit. Absolutely. If you remember that game, that infamous game where he didn't slap Steph's hand um, <laughs> on the way back uh, to the huddle, um, I think that was him like saying, "Like you picked a side. Like mm. you, you, you part of the establishment now. Like mm. I'm, I'm, I'm on the outside looking." Right. Um, and you know, I don't think he's he's in any way thinking about it. Like, oh, Steph is the reason I'm not on the team anymore. But like, I think whenever you have kind of those like super massively gravitational superstars like Steph, Braun. Um, you know, Tatum to an extent, like what happens with the team is some is by some degree based on their approval. Yeah. Like if Steph walked into what I I don't know their GM's name now, um, since LaCobe isn't there. I mean, not Kobe Myers, but whatever. If if Steph walked into the Golden State Warriors front office and he's like, Clay stays, Mm -hmm. Clay probably stays. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Um, And there was a report that came out that Clay apparently told Steph not to advocate on his behalf. Mm. So he wanted the Warriors to show, like, mm. they wanted to keep him. And mm. That's I guess, interesting. That's interesting. I guess it didn't happen, so. Yeah, so it's, it's always interesting to see, you know, how that kind of atmosphere invigorates um, these guys kind of on their second leg. Like, we don't really get to see that that often because longevity is so cooked. Yeah. You know what I mean? We never, I mean, by the time we got to see Kobe versus Shaq, I mean, it was it was hardly relevant. Yeah. Um, you know, Kyrie and Bron only won one. That's not really the same type of thing. Yeah. Um, so it's gonna be uh, that. That's a really that's a fun storyline, man. I, I really like that signing for sure. Thought it was dope. Well, what was your favorite free agency move? Well, uh, probably Mikel. Mikel, the Knicks. Knicks fan. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a Knicks fan. I'm a Knicks fan. Um, yeah, Mikel. Yeah. I think um, at first I really didn't care for it that much because I was just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm bro, like I don't, you, you, you see my timeline. I'm so locked into college football. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like <laughs> next level. Like people be asking me like that. Why well, is that? Oh, you talk about because it it's what makes me happy. That's your life. <laughs> like <laughs> it, it makes me, it makes me happy. Yeah. But um, I wasn't really locked in at first with the free agency shit. But then, um, looking at Mikhail and like what he does, he's one of the best three and D guys mm-hmm. in, in the league. Um, you know that's what Tibbs fucking loves. So um, I think he's gonna be. I think he's gonna be good. I think the season last year that he had for the Nets kind of wasn't that it wasn't that great. So maybe that's why I wasn't that super excited. But the way he's gonna be able to fit in and not have yeah. to be the guy, yeah, mm-hmm. for the Knicks is gonna is the chemistry might be crazy. It's gonna be times where the it's gonna be times where they score a bucket and the ball doesn't hit the ground. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be like nuts. It's gonna mm-hmm. be like, tss, tss, tss. they're gonna yeah. be they're gonna be they're gonna be they're gonna be nice. It's yeah. a it's a crazy roster. Jalen, Dante, Dude. Josh Hart, mm-hmm. Bridges, Randall back. Dude, mm-hmm. One of the best one of the best instances of roster construction that I can think of yeah. in the last yeah. ten years. Like yeah, really those cooking. dudes, they they are dogs. Mm-hmm. Like Jalen Brunson. Man, people don't understand what he yeah. Him. Yeah. Nigga. Jalen Brunson He's is him, bro. a different. dog. Different. You watch that dude when he gets in the paint. I'll never forget this. When he was still in Dallas, he got Rudy Gobert on the switch. And he wasn't even like, you know, small guards like to get that on the three-point line so they got more room to work with. He's at the free throw line. 
I'm thinking, all right, he's going to give him a little one-two pump fake, probably give and go. He hit that dude with a flurry of moves. Like, I don't even know if somebody in post-production could <laughs> bring up the video <laughs> as I say this. But it's a, you can't not see it. Like, mm-hmm. if you go YouTube, you go Brunson, go Bear. It was in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. He hit that mm-hmm. dude with a move mm-hmm. that I have never mm-hmm. seen before. Go Bear. Mm-hmm. turned his back to Brunson, bro. Like, he had no idea where he was. <laughs> mm-hmm. i never forget. So I remember when he was getting a contract from the Knicks and everybody was talking about, oh, it's too much, it's too much, it's too much. I just kept thinking about that play in my head, in my head. I'm like, yo, somebody who could do that is not, is never, there's, there's not too much. Yeah. It's not it too was, much. It, it like, was that's gonna, like, that's probably going to work out. And even in my group chat, like, with my homies, I was like, damn, like, this is y'all king. Like, this is who y'all hinging everything on. <laughs> and I, I got that reminder once mm. he got there. It's just like, yo, some dudes just, they, they, they just like that. They just like nah, that. Was... That's what I love about sports. Like, you can have everybody train the same way, work the same way, practice the same amount of shots. And when it's game time, they just different dudes. Mm. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I was I was watching the Mavs a lot because uh, I, I really like Luka. He's one of my favorite players. Yeah. So I was watching the Mavs a lot when Brunson was there. And it was one of those situations similar to Harden on OKC where I was like, this guy is too good to be <laughs> a, a number two option. Hmm. Like he's mm-hmm. he's gonna be a number one somewhere. Mm-hmm. Harden so, was number three. Yeah, Harden was three. You're right. Harden You're right. Three. And I mean, so, granted, sometimes it, he, a lot of time he, he was, was better. Some than, nights, yeah, yeah he was better than Russ in my mind. But mm-hmm. like he was coming off the bench, all that mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. completely fine. But like yeah. with Brunson, I watched him. and I was like, him and Luca together, it's it's good. But yeah. Br- Brunson has a much higher ceiling than being Luca's number two. Yeah. yeah, at this stage of his career, like yeah. he's still young, so. When when he got that money, I, I wasn't shocked. I'm I, the way he stepped it up, like beyond what I expected, Bro. is like I oh shit. Everybody, I think everybody, nobody expected this. Yeah, like like, like niggas thought he was gonna be good, but like yeah. yo, there was a, this. There was a point in the playoffs where Vegas had his points line at like thirty six. Bro, it was Bro, insane. He was averaging, Bro, it pissed me off. I was like, yo, what? He's six two in shoes. Yeah. he was averaging thirty five a game. Yeah, man. no, he's you know he's he's he was he, cooking niggas. He is not. Regular. And the way the city got behind him, yeah. and the, you know, it, it, it's different. He's the best. He's the best Nick since Ewing. I th- I think he has a great chance right. of winning MVP this season. Yeah, for sure. That I'm not going to lie. That would change. He has a great that would chance. rock the city. I was shocked at how little buzz he was getting last year. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I know it, it's always like that, right? Like People I just re- recognize too late. People was right. like, I remember, oh, I remember KD's first like everyone knows his name season. Mm-hmm. It was two thousand and eight. Yeah, mm-hmm. he averaged twenty five or twenty six. Didn't even get an All Star nod. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you got? Could you imagine KD <laughs> averaging twenty six <laughs> a game in two thousand eight, mm-hmm. and he doesn't even get voted All Star? So it, it's funny how, like, mm. in that first year, even when you're doing it, it's like they almost make you pay that year as, like, a do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this this time around that he's made all this noise and, you know, the Knicks fans packed out Wells Fargo and you got to – man, I think that dude is going to – and he's going to just – he's going to fuck it up. Yeah. So he's same with um, Tatum, too. I think Tatum's finally going to get MVP consideration finally, now. yeah. Now that the Celtics, you know, won mm-hmm. their ring and mm-hmm. just looked so dominant. Even, um, though, even though Jalen Brown's the best player. In the <laughs> oh, well, <clears throat> oh, my God. Do you actually believe Jalen Brown's the best one? Nah. Oh. I mean, he's not the... <laughs> I'll say this. He's not the best player, like, on paper, like, mm-hmm. player-to-player, one-to-one comparison. Mm-hmm. Um, if I was starting a team today, I might pick, pick Jalen Brown. Over Tatum? Over Tatum. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. I might do that. And I've been very critical of Jalen Brown, too. It's, yeah. Um, but I don't know. There's, there's just, there's just something deeply unsettling to me about Jason Tatum's game. I'm not going to lie. Tatum, like, I just, I watch it and I'm just like, I like, I, ah, I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. I don't know what to do with it. No, and granted, I, like, obviously he just won a title. So that kind of sounds silly. Um, but like, I mean, could you imagine Jason Tatum on the Mavs instead of Luca? I don't even think they make the play in, to be honest with you. Oh, oh, that's crazy. That's I'm not Yo, sure if they make the play. Can we go to the next topic? No, 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 I don't know if they make the play. This is crazy. You telling me, Kyrie, we'll hear me out, hear me out. Kyrie, Kyrie Irving, Jason Tatum, Josh Green, PJ Washington, and Derry Lobby Jr. That sound like a playoff team to you? Yes. Respect. That's, I mean, in the West, too, that's tough. It's the West, too, because the, these Mavs were only fifth seed this year. Hmm. I'm probably being hard on him. I'm just yeah. saying, like I, th- me- but 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 I I understand the sentiment. I I do understand the sentiment. I think I think Tatum's only because I I spent a lot of time defending him during these playoffs and it disgusted me. 
defending a Celtic. <laughs> but the takes on him were so ridiculous. Like, yeah, I, no, I, I, do think, I do think he can be timid. I like I like Jalen Brown. He, he's, he's, he's aggressive. Like, first quarter, he really sets the tone offensively mm-hmm. yeah, he does. for the Celtics. Tatum kind of focuses on facilitating. Jalen Brown is, is getting you six to eight points in that first quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. There was a certain just, just a certain confidence and command yeah. to him, whereas yeah. Tatum – even though I, I I really valued the fact that he was facilitating well, rebounding mm-hmm. well, he was being that decoy to where everyone else could eat. Right, right. Um, so I I I understand what you're saying, I, and I get why people thought Brown was a better player because he was he was more efficient too. But I think Tatum's just like the the nucleus; mm-hmm. he's the focal point. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's yeah, nar- nah. narratives. And, and, narratives and, and, and it's not that I don't like Tatum, just, mm-hmm. just for yeah. the record. I do like Tatum. I actually like him. I probably like him a lot more. Um, I, I'm in a group chat with a Sixers fan. Um, and I remember one time he tried to, I, I mentioned that Tatum is eventually going to be an MVP type player. This is like 2018. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you're bugging. And I was like, <laughs> what? How could you not think that? Yeah, no. Nah. So, of course, now that he's here, I'm like, you know, this is exactly who I saw him being. Yeah. I just, um, there's just, some, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm doing a bad job of articulating it, but. There's just something about him where I'm just like, I just, I, 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 there's a little left to be desired for I me understand. with him. Um, I completely understand. I don't know if it's his late clock offense or whatever it is. Like, it's just something about it. when I watch him. I'm just like, dude, like, I would, if if I had to be the one to sign your $300 million check, um, I'd get a rope in a chair after. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, yeah, like, you deserve that, but like, please not on my team. <laughs> yeah. Lastly, I want to talk about one of the hot topics. This isn't free agency. This stemmed from the NBA draft, which was probably the most underwhelming in terms of, like, the talent that was available, mm-hmm. the names that were drafted. And mm-hmm. I don't watch college basketball as much as I used to, but it's, like, it's those years, like, it's it's names. Like, you know names. Like, mm-hmm. Zion Williamson, Williamson's year, you know a bunch of those names that mm-hmm. were getting drafted. Mm-hmm. Um, and this year, it was just, like, a lot of these dudes were whatever to me. I do, like... Who, who the Lakers got, the Dalton Connect. Great player. But at number 50, uh, 55, Lakers drafted Bronny James. And that the, the discourse surrounding that hasn't quite been Caitlin Clark level, but it, it, it's been pretty shitty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think for me, the, the, the topic of nepotism and black nepotism and the way that it's been demonized. But Bomani Jones, corny ass. I, 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 I don't know if y'all saw Bomani Jones' tweets. I did. I, did. About, I was like, my brother, like, why, why, why are you talking down on the black man? Like, yes, okay, Bronny James got drafted because of who his father is. He is a capable basketball player. Sure. Like, his, his USC stats, not great. Could come, coming off a, a heart, heart surgery or a heart condition, whatever he had. He's coming off the bench. Like, he didn't really get minutes like that. He was a freshman. Like, yeah, you know, like, you look at those numbers, you're like, this guy's in the NBA. Crazy. But the nigga got drafted 55th. Like, well, like why, why are we making such a big deal about mm-hmm. a number 55 Mm-hmm. draft pick and also we have seen multiple people who end up being drafted late grind get better and, and become the stars of this league so um i it's it's just the unfortunate part of like being lebron james's son and i thought lebron had a great quote about it uh i saw it today he was just talking about Bronny, and he was like yeah everyone wants to give the credit to the fact that like i'm his dad but like the, the amount of work that he had to put in to to get to USC and the amount that it, like I'm not forcing him to do this. I'm not forcing him to play basketball. If he wanted to be a hmm. chef or a streamer, like he he could have done that and I would have supported him. But like this is what he wants. Um and I, I thought that was just a really great perspective on it. Cause people have these theories about Braun and him trying to him forcing it and like creating this em- and I, I mean he is creating an empire. Like he's he's LeBron James. And like why wouldn't you? Like if I'm, if I'm in the NBA and my son wants to hoop, of course I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure he gets to the league too. Granted, I'm not just going to open these doors for you. Like, like you, you got to put the work. You got to be nice, like, for sure. But the whole demonizing of black nepotism and utilizing connections, like, you, you wouldn't act this way if it was an investment banking job. You wouldn't act this way if it was fucking, like, anything else. But with basketball and with Braun, like, the conversation has just been, like, really ugly. And And, again, this is a number... 55 draft pick nobody ever cares about number 55 draft picks like so it's that's just been a really annoying thing for me but i'm I'm happy for Bronny. i'm happy for for braun um i wish the lakers made some other moves in free agency <laughs> we we lost out on the james harden sweepstakes the Jonas valanciunas sweepstakes the derozan sweepstakes we lost out on clay, clay. like god damn i, I like, thought y'all were a lock 
for Clay. Yeah, bro. Because I, I, I remember Sean years ago he was he was being linked to the Lakers. His like mm-hmm. you know his family and all that. So it's like it made perfect sense. But hey, man. So uh, Bronny, I, I you know I'm looking forward to seeing you get like five minutes to, during the play in. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. But a lot happening in NBA free agency. It's been fun. I'm interested in Paul George to the Sixers as well. I I still don't necessarily believe in them. Like they they've had so many iterations. The Ben Simmons, Jimmy Butler era, the James Harden era. Like, I think adding Paul George to Maxi and Embiid is a great fit. That's like, great if fit. if they're able to click, mm-hmm. that's a top, top three, top four team. You basically swap Tobias Harris with Paul George. Yeah, like you can't be mad at that. Like mm-hmm. that's you can't be mad. But you health, gotta do that every day, health right? is still always a thing. Like mm-hmm. Paul George played seventy four games last season, so mm-hmm. good for him for Shout that. Mm-hmm. Embiid missed a lot of games. Like that's just that's just what he does. You know, you're not gonna yeah. have Embiid, Embiid there the whole time. But Maxi did a Decent job holding them up. Maxi having Paul George, you know, I think he'll, I think they'll be able to keep them afloat definitely. when they inevitably right. lose Embiid for like twenty five games. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely interested in in that one. But yeah, man, it's been a fun free agency period. I'm already looking forward to basketball season, and I, I need football season back first. I need it. Need it bad. I need it. Need it bad, brother. Can't wait. Can't wait. Just, just, just a few more weeks. Um, but. Let's get into this main topic for the day. Um, so, what did what, I do for the 4th of July? I was on that boat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cruise, and cruise, it was man. overwhelming, dog. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. Like, I tweeted about this. Like, yo, we're on a boat called Royal Caribbean mm-hmm. off the coast of Mexico. Mm-hmm. Why is the Star Spangled Banner blaring <laughs> at 9 a.m.? I was miserable. And then, like, everyone's got an American flag tank top. And then... They was locked in. Um... It was it was so aggressive. Mm-hmm. It was just the miracle of it all. I was just like, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. I've I've started calling July Fourth uh, Juneteenth Deluxe for me. So <laughs> I don't I don't do Yo, I don't do nothing patriotic, but um, <laughs> you know I, I I enjoy a day off. Shout yeah, no, nah, I mean the, the spirit of it is fun. Yeah, you know it's always nice to get you know outside yeah. with the cookouts and all that stuff. And for sure, being on a boat for on a cruise for it was a unique experience. But mm-hmm. um, usually my family has this massive cookout up in Rockland County. Um, uh, where a lot of them are based, um, and that's like you look forward to that all year. Like yeah, the dominoes, the the basketball, the baseball, the the uh, my, my aunt makes us do this uh, sack race, and mm. then the egg. The, it's yeah, yeah, you it's know, fun. It's, it's, it's like fun. We, we do the whole like yeah, yeah. We do the whole um, crazy, the yes. whole thing. So hard, yeah. So um, yeah. I'm 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 into like the the, the spirit of it. Yeah. <laughs> you feel I, me? What you do for the fourth wheel? I I had a rooftop, but that's that's whatever. I think. <laughs> Both Juneteenth and July Fourth landing in the middle of the week. Trash. Literally, uh, I feel like I was Trash. in the multiverse. It was Wednesday and Thursday. It was right? like it was like nuts, bro. I feel like everybody thought everybody thought Saturday was Sunday last like this <laughs> yeah. past. It was just it, nuts. It was, it was just confusing. it was just like nuts, bro. Yeah, it's yeah. just I just you know I feel like we I feel like everybody I feel like that shit really fucked people up. Like, yeah. It was just people were just messed up for like all week. Like, mm-hmm. are people working? Were people working on Friday? Do you have to do a meeting on Thursday? Like, it was just nuts, bro. Yeah. It was like, it was crazy. I, I mean, I hit a rooftop watching fireworks. Fireworks, uh, or or Fort July in the city, especially New York City, is always fire because it's just like everybody's just like it's just free reign. Like, it's yeah. nuts. Like, it's nuts. You know, so. It's always fun, but yeah. That's what's up. So my fourth was, uh, I'm really starting to take my days off as days of rest and actually rest. I think in my, I'm 29 now, but like any year where I got a day off from work, I was like, yo, where we at? We outside? We, we somewhere? Blah, blah, blah. Stayed in the crib, ordered me a box of White Claws and just chilled. Nice. nice. That's good. And did my best to stay off of Twitter. But there was one thing that dropped that day that made it virtually impossible to stay off of Twitter. <laughs> Kendrick Lamar decided to drop. The Not Like Us music video, it was talked about for weeks. People thought the concert was going to be used as the video. And then you saw that he conceived something that was, you know, um, more like more like scripted, more produced, more more artful. Conceptual. Um, the, you know, the Easter eggs, the symbolism, the unity within the West Coast, like all, all that stuff. So how would you feel about the, the Not Like Us music video? Um, j- j- we'll, we'll just start with, like, the music video itself. I liked it. I liked it. It was mm-hmm. cool. Very conceptual, um, very day free, very PG Lane, <laughs> very Kendrick Lamar. I only say that because I didn't realize how many people didn't realize that day free be doing damn near all of Kendrick's videos. Mm-hmm. Like uh, people was, 
I, yeah, it just kind of blew my mind. I guess people really don't pay attention that much and, like, not saying they should because, you know, people are there as fans and, like, as consumers and don't really give a fuck about that shit. But, yeah, it was very day free very PG Lane, very uh, Kendrick Lamar, and it was tight. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. They likewise. took it easy on him. <laughs> <laughs> likewise, right. So that's that specifically. I remember when the first when the song first came out, I joke with my boys that they're gonna have um they're gonna have a fake Drake in the video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a lot of people thought that. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but the more the bigger it got, um, and the more it kind of permeated pop culture, the 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 more I re the more I expected that it was gonna be more subtle mm -hmm. and toned down. Um, and uh, I thought it was great. I watched the video a few times, and I, um, I tried to stay off of social media the first few times I watched it because I didn't want it ruined. Yeah. Um, but I also have this massive group chat that doesn't wait for anything. <laughs> oh my god. Um, and they shouldn't. Yeah. Like yeah. that's kind of what I love about them. Um, so uh, I, they did hit me to some of the things that were going on, but I was able to watch it from a mostly like pure perspective, and I, I, I thought it was great. I, it's funny you say that about Dave because um, I was thinking about his kind of his growth as like a. a a, a director and just you know a, a person of culture in general like mm -hmm. i think in, in the beginning not the beginning but i think maybe around the damn era um dave myers i think was doing a lot of kendrick's videos yeah. and he was doing it as dave myers and the little homies mm -hmm. and then the people started to realize i think we think the little homies is dave free mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then now it's like dave myers not probably pitch anymore dave is like he's strong enough to run with it mm -hmm. um they had that pg lane commercial for cash app which i thought was great so mm -hmm. it's been fun to just see their um, kind of like creative evolution um, as as creative partners in in a vacuum, like aside from you know everything else. But um, yeah, I thought the video itself was really dope. I think um, it, it created a memory in a moment mm -hmm. um, that you know I think we've all been pining for uh, for quite a while. Um, and you know, one thing I, I I hope people learn to do is to let artists be artists. You know, I think that's something that we we're not doing enough of these days. There was so much discourse as soon as the video came out, like probably maybe 15 minutes after it came out, I had to run down to dinner. So at that point, I have a chance to get on Twitter and, and, and just kind of scroll through some of the opinions. And I'm just like, man, when did everybody become Hype Williams? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just tweet after tweet about what should have happened, what yeah. should have been done, who yeah. should have been involved, who should have directed, who should have appeared, who should have been in the front, who should have been in the back. I'm just like, damn. Mm. Like... <laughs> Like, all right, like it or don't like it, but, like, why does everything have to be this, like, you know... That's how polarizing shit you know is I mean? now, though. Yeah, it, but it it's, really is, it's just... Too, it it, 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 it takes much. the fun much, out yeah. of being a fan, yeah. I think, a little bit when you're so caught up in, like, trying to d direct or, or, or dictate the moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the moment should dictate our energy and our response. Like, pick a side, but, like, you know, almost going back and, and doing this regressive analysis where it's like, oh, almost like this thing is not valid. Like, mm -hmm. not even I like or dislike it, but it's not valid because he didn't do this. And it's like, who are you to decide that? Yeah. Um. And so it was it was it was interesting and kind of annoying to see all of those reactions. Um. <sighs> yeah. You know, I just felt like people weren't being genuine. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. first of all, this is one of the biggest hit songs of the decade in any genre already yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. we're talking about a, a seismic moment and it is it's, it's because of hip-hop like yeah. i just felt like we weren't really enjoying that part of it enough um yeah. and 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 so that's what i tried to do um and i, I really enjoyed it man the breadcrumbs were really fun mm -hmm. um i've had a lot of fun assigning my own meanings to what i think you know was going <laughs> on i'm a big wire guy yeah. um, and i'm a big wire season two guy mm -hmm. which no one is yeah so when i saw the containers regardless i mean first of all shout out to Nashe. Cause I joke with my boy, I was like, "This isn't. This might be an accidental nod to Tanache, mm -hmm. but knowing Dave Free, there's no accidents." So I was like, "Shout out to Dave Free for doing that." Cause I'm, I, I hope one day I get to ask him this, but I know if I ask him, he's gonna give me one of those like, <laughs> like you know, I knew what I was doing type <laughs> shit. Um, but obviously, you know, I think it's more of a wire. It's obviously yeah. like meant to probably be a wire, a, a, a wire reference, which I thought was really dope. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just, it, it's just a lot of fun, man. This has been. This whole arc with the song and the video and everything has been just fun. Like, it's been fun to see. It's been fun to see the glee in people's faces when the song come on. I was at a silent disco, dog, <laughs> on Royal Caribbean at, like, 11 p.m. at night. And it's funny because, like, you can feel the DJ building to it. You know what I mean? Like, he started with I Want to Dance with Somebody mm -hmm. and, you know, the Celine Dion of it all. And then he kind of, like, he threw the Bruno Mars in there for the segue. And then now it's Sexy Red. Now So I'm like, okay, I know where we're mm -hmm. going with this. Um, 
And there are two channels. So not like us started playing on one, and then you can see everyone's Switch. headphone go from a, a <laughs> green to blue. <laughs> and now you got like 250, 300 mm-hmm. people, like a good amount of them white, Indian, Hispanic, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just gleefully like singing to this song, like grabbing their family from the sides. And it's it, it's just, I, I tell my boy, it's hey, y'all. Like it's, <laughs> it's that, like it's become that kind of like rallying cry. Like your grandma <laughs> knows it. She does the, I see dead people. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's um, it's just been a lot of fun. Like, yeah. that, that was my takeaway after I saw the video. I was like, man, this has been fun. Yeah, yeah, good, good video. Um, I was, I, I definitely was a bit surprised at how subtle it was. Mm. I, I, given Kendrick's energy, I just thought it was, it was going to be a lot more fake Drake, mm-hmm, like just mm-hmm. a lot more direct, fuck Drake type energy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, th- and the thing is people have been looking back over his records for years yeah. after the beef and been like, Oh shit, that was directed at Drake. That was directed at Drake. That was directed Yo, at Drake. Baby Keem family ties. I implore everyone listening mm-hmm. to Dude, this to go, go back, back yeah, and listen back. to that verse. Yeah. Bruh, I like it gave me like a jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, he's been shooting yeah not swinging shooting and 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 you would have to be looking for it to really get it um and Mm. so now people are looking for it Mm -hmm. and similar to this video some stuff is obvious like the owl in the cage or him beating up a fucking pinata that's looking like an owl but then there's the the scene where he's sitting on the bed or he's doing the push-ups and and there's the The painting face in the wall Mm -hmm. you know a reference to push-ups you know Mm -hmm. i I, I know my pictures on the wall when Mm -hmm. i cook up Mm -hmm. and him doing the push-ups reference to drop and give me 50 uh, I like the scene with the Bible where they they hide the Bible. Like, there's just a lot of different shit that I thought was like, it, it was it's clever ways of doing it because I think while it was a diss record, it's obviously has y- united, you know, people within Cali and mm. the West Coast, and so mm. I loved mm-hmm. that communal aspect, that drone shot where it's yeah. over all the people awesome. mm. dancing along, mm. rapping to it, having a bunch of different dancers dancing with mustard outside the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I'm. I'm ultimately glad that he kept, like, he kept the shots subtle where you would have mm-hmm. to be looking for them, and he really focused more on the communal aspect of it. So, I was I was really happy with that. I I got into one. So there's like obviously goes without saying, listeners, y'all know, Carrie, you know, Will, you know, Drake's my guy, and like, but I'm I think I'm able to have a measured conversation about stuff uh-huh. like this and there are some drake fans who just have not been impressed by anything kendrick has done so <laughs> in, in in one of my group not chats publicly. huh not publicly <laughs> but publicly privately whatever um and so in 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 one of my group chats this dude was like oh the video is not that impressive and we were just like all right like you haven't liked anything he's does he's done this whole battle right. so so we kind of right. know right. and he was like why is he dropping the video two months later and then goes, you goes back to what we were talking about earlier about people don't even know what working a record looks like exactly exactly and so that that was my thing and then you see the social media discourse about people saying kendrick is milking this thing and i'm just like well Mm -hmm. one a lot of people drop music videos late like i i I brought up to a drake fan i was like yo drake rich baby daddy dropped in october the video dropped valentine's day 2024 Mm -hmm. did you have a problem with that he was like well it wasn't a single i'm like well Mm -hmm. it it technically was a post album release single it it wasn't and not like us isn't a single it's it's like it's Within a beef, like it might as well be a Lucy. I don't think it's right. gonna be on Kendrick's next album, um, but you know, niggas come up with their different qualifications for mm-hmm. it. It's just whatever. But the whole conversation of like milking Kendrick, milking this thing, like you know, I, I guess if you want to look at it from the standpoint of he's only dropped five songs this year and they've all been aimed at Drake, sure. But like, it's not him milking this thing. Like if, if you think about it, Kendrick's only dropped his records, did the concert, dropped a music video. It's really the fans who are milking this thing and like making it to where like Kaz's clip that's been circulating through social media. Like I, I saw Carrie I quoted it. I quoted it where Kaz is like, yo, not like us is getting to the mm-hmm. point where it's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it's getting to the point where it's like dangerously close to corny. Mm-hmm. And people got so angry at that clip, but yeah. they misunderstood his point. He wasn't saying not like us is a bad song. He's not saying it's a corny song. It's everything surrounding it. The examples he used was BT Awards, Taraji P. Henson. Doing a "Not Like Us" remix, Kamala Harris referencing "Not Like Us" lyrics when they're talking about political stuff. Like that's the corny shit. That's to, that's where it's like, all right, bro. Like, y'all, y'all not tired. Like we haven't had enough. It's too much. The song itself, again, it's a dope song. 
Niggas caught me on video dancing to it at, at my party. <laughs> like, like ah! I, the, the, I, I, I can't front. It's a dope song. <laughs> Video's good. I thought, I thought the concert was cool. But it's not Kendrick Lamar milking this. Mm-hmm. And so people who are saying that are so misguided. And I, I, I love that y'all got on the topic of, like, working a record earlier because it's like, sure, to people who maybe w- feel defensive of Drake, how dare this nigga drop a music video two months later? But this is what you do. Mm-hmm. Like, if a record gets this big, you find ways to to mm-hmm. maximize its shelf life, its, its longevity. Because we don't get hits that last. Mm-hmm. Like, the the number one song in the country is changing almost every every yeah. week. Yeah, like it, it's just the reality of what we're in. And so, yeah. for an artist like Kendrick, who's big on staying power. I'm I'm not shocked that, that he took this time and doing it on July 4th was genius too. He had his concert on Juneteenth, dropped <laughs> Not Like Us video July 4th. Mm-hmm. Drake Perfect. and them happened to be at the white party. Michael Rubin, again, this is, this is another conspiracy theory. Like whether he did it intentionally or not, it's it don't it working out that way is brilliant. It's mm-hmm. fucking brilliant because mm-hmm. if niggas was at that party pulling out their phones watching the video and then look, oh hey Drake, what's up man? Yo, let's, let's get another drink. <laughs> Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you imagine? <laughs> Did you see Kendrick drop, bro? You know? I had so much fun imagining that scene. Yeah, it was. It, it's funny. Like that's a, that, that was one of the funny, the funny tweets about the situation. It, it did get annoying that the discourse on my day of rest became <laughs> not like us. Kendrick milking it, blah blah blah, yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. Like the, the rap beef came <laughs> up like, on another holiday. Oh yeah, my god! Right. But I get it. And Kendrick earned his victory lap. Like yeah. that's that's what it is at the end yeah. of the day. Like he's. He's earned his victory lap, but he he's not even wilding on his victory lap. Like he's he's he sh- he showed up that one week. He did his concert. Mm-hmm. He dropped the video. Like that's that's all he's done. So yeah. I don't not I don't blame him for it. Yeah, and I think um I will say for for Kaz's tweet. Shout out Kaz. Fun fact: People used to call me Kaz when I got to the source. Really? <laughs> um, it was the beard and you know whatever. Yeah. Um, um, I took it as a you know compliment, mm-hmm. but um. His tweet, his funny thing about the tweet, he didn't do himself any favors with the caption. Yeah. Because his actual take in the video was way more nuanced than what he said, what he wrote. But, um, yeah, to, I wanted to say something to that point because I was watching, in, in, in preparation to come here, I'm watching the BT Awards at, at home. And um, I'm doing it while I'm cleaning my fridge. Because, you know, I've been, I've been away for a week, so everything started from, from scratch. <laughs> so I'm, throwing, I'm just cleaning my fridge, throwing stuff in the garbage, like wiping stuff down. And I don't see it, but I hear the Kamala interview yeah, with Taraji oh <laughs> and cringe. Like I literally like, I'm, I'm a very oh dramatic person. God. Even when I'm alone, like I, I do things for dramatic effect. I literally dropped like the little solution, the little uh, detergent solution I was You're using. Fried. I dropped it on the floor. <laughs> You're fried. Holy I could shit. not believe what I was hearing. I was like, te- we, we have not yet bypassed this level of bullshit. Mm. Like don't like do like, please like, you know how you'll get in an argument with a girl mm-hmm. and you're like, look, you got your side, I got mine, that's cool, mm-hmm. but don't talk to me like I'm five. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why are they still doing this like, oh, I'm going to speak black to you yeah, bro. real quick. Yeah, it's parodying so that I can, themselves. So, you know what I mean? So that I can use you as a, use this medium as a vessel to push across yeah. my agenda that actually doesn't have anything about your interest <laughs> in yeah. focus anyway. Um, and that was, I think the key kind of like the turnkey thing that Kaz was trying to say. And to go back to my example about the cruise, as much as I enjoyed that moment where everyone was just kind of rejoicing in the, 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 the hit quality of this song, it was also kind of an uncomfortable moment. Bro, it's white people. You know what I mean? Like, because th- this, this song is literally designed to almost gatekeep a little bit. Yes. Like the, the point of it is to kind of point out the fact that like everything is not everything. Like things mean things, yeah. right? Like there are boundaries that actually matter still, cultural, ethnic, heritage wise. Like these things matter. And if you don't think they matter, then why did Drake lose? Mm-hmm. Because that was kind of what part of his loss hinged on. So, you know, watching, like just seeing all these people like, you know, it's becoming it's become a universal anthem. Yeah. It's become a pop song to the point that, like, mm-hmm. you know, everyone is partaking. Mm-hmm. And it's literally an anthem mm-hmm. about the antithesis of that. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> that was where I understood Kaz because I'm like, if Kamala's quoting it, it's outpaced itself. Yeah. It's flown too close to the sun. Yes. But 
because this genre has been so influential for a decade plus, mm -hmm. how could she not? It's natural. Right? So, you know, that Catch-22 has been very, very interesting to kind of, like, navigate. Mm -hmm. um, but because of it, I understood exactly what Kaz was talking about. Yeah. And also, people, like, folks should put some respect on Kaz's name. Like, for sure. This is not somebody who just woke up with an opinion, like, yeah. 20 plus he's, years he's like covering yeah. been on the boots on the ground he's had conversations with people some of these folks can only hope to yeah um so you know th that was what actually made me want to click on the video because i'm like wait a minute because like i i know Kaz well enough to know that like i i could have guessed how he felt about the record mm -hmm. so to he see him actually like express it i was just like i'm glad he i'm glad he went out there i'm yeah. glad he i'm glad he went out there yeah and it's 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 an unpopular opinion right now especially in the face of people who again didn't fully understand what he was mm -hmm. trying to say like mm -hmm. i i watched it and i was like oh, i can't wait to wait, wait, wait to read these quotes and yeah. it was just everybody yeah. like you stupid fuck that fuck that you mm -hmm. stupid now the, the the timing of it was nuts because the video dropped hours later yo i don't think that he was saw that so coming. funny i don't think he saw that coming that was because that took it out of here because when i yeah. when i first engaged with it it was doing numbers but it was yeah. doing like local numbers yeah, regional was, numbers you know what I mean? <laughs> we, we, we hadn't gotten to the comma phase yeah. so Jesus. that was um when i came back to it, it that was pretty hilarious to see yeah. Um. But yeah. Yeah. I. I. I think that's that. That's the dichotomy that that that's been really noticeable for me. Like, mm -hmm. damn. Like, we got a Mexican version. <laughs> <laughs> and shout out my Mexicano. You know what I mean? But yeah, I love him. I'm just like, why? Like, it just goes to show you, like, you know, this. This is. It's not even about hip hop. It's a new pop. It's like, it just dictates every single crevice of culture at this point. Yeah. Um. Which lends itself to these. You know. Um. Uh, avenues of appropriation. Yeah, moments where people, politicians think them quoting it is working to their benefit. I like, hate when they speak black to no, me, dog. Nobody oh like that. I hate that no, shit. Nobody like that. I hate that shit. So it was much. it was not it. And I, I saw somebody say Taraji P is getting dangerously, dangerously close to Tiffany Haddish territory. Hey man. And I wanted to do the little ice tray like swing at nobody thing. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, they kind of right, bro. If 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 you watch <laughs> if you watch how she hosted those, that, 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 that award show, it was not good to me. I was I was a little disappointed. Yeah, it was. Like, it and was I'm, not I'm it. a Taraji fan. She's dope. She's amazing. Um, Actress, like film. Mm. you know all that but mm. hosting i i didn't like her in that role but um i think another aspect of this whole milking um not like us thing is a lot of people have made it like a personality trait to talk <laughs> about this record every <laughs> single or to talk about the beef mm. every single day and i'm like bro i get it huge moment you a Kendrick fan or you hate Drake, you like it. But I'm like, God, like, bro, it's, it's, it's just two months later. Mm -hmm. And niggas is still like, yo, I really can't believe Drake put the heart part six in. That <laughs> shit was terrible. I'm like, my nigga, really? Bro? Like, like bro. two months later, you still can't believe it? <laughs> people, like, people are just, people, you know what's happening? People are just watching that one video. The breakdown video. Oh, uh, the 616 like, it, it, Yeah, this shit's going to have layers, bro. This shit's like. It's just like Dune too, my nigga. Like <laughs> for real, like it, it's it's the it's one of the biggest things in popular culture. Yeah, I'm and not people a fan are gonna talk about it. People are people are consumers for real, bro. Like mm -hmm. for real, yes. for real. Yes. I feel like that's what it. I feel like that's what we're really seeing. Now. You said it. Yep. Yeah, us. We can stop talking about it, but people that literally don't work in this shit or like don't like people are con people are consuming this, bro. Like people are just seeing that video. That video is like an hour. That. I clicked on. I was like, "Bro, people are watching this. Holy shit! That's just like an hour long, bro." Yeah. This nigga breaking down that song. I'm like, "Damn." It's not a nigga. Well, yeah. My, well, yeah I'm, sorry. I'm not a fan of the breakdown videos. At yeah, all. I don't like. I don't. I don't, I don't I, watch I, none I, of those shit. I, I don't. I don't even know who. I didn't know who Trap Lord Ross was until. Wait, maybe he's the one that did it. No, it's a different one. It's a different guy. Because that was the dude that did the King Von. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm just saying. I just didn't know who none of these niggas was until yeah. like three months ago. Mm -hmm. I wasn't until that group chat we was in and people was talking about. Traveler, I'm like, who is this? He's yeah. a rapper. No, he just breaks down videos. I'm like, oh, breaks he's, down. He's he's based in like London, London or something. Yeah, bro. All those breakdown shits and all these crazy oh. shits is nuts, bro. There's something really like gentrified about something this era nuts, of bro. breakdown videos that mm -hmm. always I call breakdown, it. The, I call these it accounts. All these accounts that are run by like white people or Indian dudes. Like it's this nuts. Yeah, bro. it's really it's really uncomfortable. It's um, actually nuts. They feel like bots. They feel like Russian bots. I call it the dissect economy. <laughs> um, I feel like that podcast was a gift and a curse yeah. to it's got everyone thing in the editorial it. landscape in hip hop. Yeah, because it it, it almost like I, I don't want to get on my like cool herc shit, but like hip hop is it, it's 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 a 
it's a try. Like it's supposed to be like something that almost like it, the, the hidden codes are hidden for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, they're not supposed to be interpretable, or they're not supposed to be able to be translated by just anybody. Right. You know what I mean? Like there's a there's a level of cultural and I think um, understanding of heritage too that you have to have in order to really really like have a galvanized understanding of hip hop. Yeah. And even though it's become this, you know, highly commodified and, 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 you know, pop culture driven thing, I think that still counts. That still matters. Like the, the, the epitome of hip hop is still the kind of thing where like, you can't just walk into a coffee, coffee shop and everybody gets it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this, this, like I said, this dissect economy that we live in, this content economy that we live in, it feels like it's aimed at reversing that. Yeah. Um, and that's uncomfortable for me. Yeah, it's, um, it's like attending a magic show, and then after the show, a nigga posts the steps of all his tricks. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Whether or not they have any validity, but like everyone still like takes the paper and runs. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. And again, like similar to the Kamala example, like these are some of those unintended consequences of when something just becomes this influential, this massive, this, and and when and when the ownership of it becomes this diversified and kind of outsourced. You know, these are the things that happen. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, and we, th that might not even be something we, I can look forward to. Um, we may never get, you know, a certain level of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like we may never get the, the kind of the vintage editorial landscape that we used to have, right. Where, you know, you have folks that are quote unquote in the know, the arbiters with authority who can really like kind of sift through, you know, um, some of the madness, you know, and, 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 and speak to what really counts. But yeah. Um, I, it's just such a slippery slope, dude. It's mm -hmm. such a slippery slope. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's like on the surface, it's incredible to say hip hop has been the most popular genre for years. Yeah. But when you think about everything that comes with it, and when you think about people outside of us wanting to be authorities in it, like that's the most frustrating thing is when a nigga who don't look like me tries to tell me about <laughs> hip hop, whether it's an editor, whether it's just a random mm -hmm. person on the internet, whether it's someone I know in real life, like. Mm. I I I'm, I'm, I feel like I brought it up on the show before, but I was in college, my freshman year of college, and just talk, talking about Drake and like a, a white person tried to tell me, bro, Drake's not real hip hop. Kendrick Lamar is. I was like, shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> shut the like, shut up. Like, you 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 could like it, you could be a fan of it, you could prefer Kendrick over Drake, but you're not gonna tell me what real Yo. hip hop is. You don't know what real hip hop. That's is. what's really been blowing me about this too. This, yeah. this whole beef, really. Oh yeah, it's like it's like all oh, the real hip hop fans are taking victory laps now. Yeah. It's like, huh? Your guy Drake, he finally failed. He finally, um, he finally didn't have enough of those uh, vibe raps. <laughs> now, vibe raps. And now, and now, you know, yeah. Now all those guys, yeah, all those guys. Oh my god, all those guys are like, yeah, they're just tooting their horn and freaking, <laughs> and, and they're posting like. Hella like samurai shit and like and like you know what I'm saying like like the you, you thought you could fight the master but the master was this it's just like very like that type of stuff That's right now funny. and it's just like come on bro yeah mm -hmm. y'all killing us bro yeah y'all killing us y'all gonna make it corny yeah yeah like, y'all making it corny yeah right. and so you know we just see this massive cultural moment from May and the way that it's continuing on and I think. <laughs> when we get to Kendrick potentially dropping an album this year or we get to Grammy season oh next year and with, Sick. like, football coming back, like, I, I'm sure Not Like Us is going to be infused into football-type stuff and mm -hmm. all these... So, I, I, one thing I do like is when... um when the New York Liberty beat the Sparks, <laughs> the caption was they not like us. Oh, really? I fucked with that. That's I fucked with that. That's I fucked probably. with that. <laughs> I fucked with that. Like, like you using it within these, like, sports social media accounts are, are my favorite thing. It, like, these, these social media managers are really good I at what they it, do. Dude. So, like, stuff like that is cool to me. But when it seeps into politics, when it's got niggas at the BT Awards parodying black people, like, me, being caricatures of them, them, themselves, like, just all that, that, that's where it gets to be a bit much to me. And again, it's annoying because if, if I say this publicly, like, bro, I, 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 I quoted Kaz's tweet and I say Kaz was right. Someone replied to me. They're like, we know where you stand, Armand. I was See? like, I was ah. to tell you, I was like I've been giving Kendrick credit throughout this entire yeah, battle. Have. And I said he won. You have. So like, I, I don't know what this means. And then yeah. the, the nigga tried to switch up, change it. <laughs> I was like, bro, you, you know what you said. You know what you meant. Like, bro, don't, did you see the way they were reacting for the snippet? I thought it was hard oh, too, which was good. It was good, yeah, but was the dope. white niggas they said, "Oh yeah, this is the 
Niggas was like, this is the hardest <laughs> shit I've I, I said, I said the hardest? I said, damn. Yeah. Like niggas, bro, niggas act like that was I'm like, okay, hold on a second. What's yeah. going on? Like yeah. this is this is the influence is Yeah. A lot of them are still right a lot now. of them are still new here. I know. You know what I mean? I, I remember mean. the first time I heard Young Berg, I thought he was next. <laughs> but I was 14. That's what that's, that's what you do. That's what you do when it you is, first I mean, when you yeah. first show up somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Like the snippet was hard, but like, damn, like Yeah. Um yeah, the boogie man shit is say. starting to get yeah, whatever. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like <laughs> people posting all these samurai quotes and, and boogie mans and, <laughs> and and this and that and like it's just it gets to the point where like you're you guys are you guys are walking the line of being the corny guys that never went outside and touched grass <laughs> and, and watched anime for twelve hours and yeah. never talked to a girl and listened to Kendrick Lamar on repeat <laughs> for. Uh, 12 hours a day. And that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> the beef still comes up in real life. Like, people mm -hmm. who haven't seen in a while, they'll ask me, like, yo, are you mm -hmm. are you doing okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Or, or <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. When niggas ask that, that's so, like, yo, that yeah. It's, it's, like, suck my dick. Like, honestly, I, I just laugh it off because, like, because <laughs> yeah, people yeah. mean it jokingly. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 yeah. sometimes there's, the, they, they really are trying to, like, mock me on yeah, yeah, jokes. Yeah. But, like, uh, some other people who I have, like, real conversations with, and I'm like, okay, like, I, I, I like, it's still a moment for people. It's still a, a conversation piece. It's hard as um, fuck. What? I said it's hard as fuck. Like, yeah, yeah. The song and just yeah, the moment just overall. Like, and especially like, again yeah. when they know you work in music. Like, oh God. They 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 look for your opinion mm -hmm. and they either look for it to influence theirs or, or they want to argue with you. Yeah. And it's just like it, it's it's just exhausting for me. Like again, I go out, I hear the song, <laughs> I, I enjoy it. I I saw the video, I enjoyed it. I saw the concert, I enjoy it. It's just e everything surrounding it. Mm -hmm. Like it, it reminds me of like when in like 2014 when uh j cole fans were like joking memeing like oh you gotta have a certain level of intelligence to like j cole <laughs> and people Yo, started to hate j cole because, because of people of that. saying yeah, that yeah, i'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't even have a problem with his music you right just, you're just like the people and the narratives that they mm -hmm. create around the music and it's mm -hmm. like as as much as it shouldn't happen fans or <laughs> even non-fans just anti whatever people can ruin something for you, you. Yeah. <laughs> like they'll they'll make you not want to engage with it as much yeah. and i think that's just been the reality of this thing and so i am happy for the people who every day love tweeting about yo family matters like yo that shit hard but that nigga was lying or like <laughs> yo like 616 to la slept on euphoria and all of which i agree with euphoria was great 16 to la was slept on family matters yeah he was lying it was hard like whatever like i agree with all that but God, like you gotta tweet it every day yeah like, family matters was, was, was some of my <laughs> favorite every day? shit hard rapping that drake has ever done shit hard. I, that middle portion i remember when when i first heard it I was in the house with my homegirl. We was we was having a good ass time. Mm -hmm. There was a bottle involved. We was having a good ass time. Yeah, we didn't even know all this shit was about to happen. It was just Friday night, I think, or Saturday night. It was it was it was, it was Friday night. Yeah. Then the stuff started rolling out, mm -hmm. so we're listening to it in real time. We pouring up. We having a good time, Bruh, I remember when I first heard that middle portion of Family. Then you went to demon mode. <laughs> I was like. I was like, oh, wait a minute. He could still win this. Uh -huh. Yeah, bro. bro. <laughs> but, nigga, I, I was like, I wait. I was talking shit. <laughs> I was like, wait. Because granted, most of it wasn't even directed at Kendrick. Yeah. And that was my issue with it. That was where I was like, my secondary reaction, I was like, hmm. Maybe, maybe he could win the war, but not the battle. Oh, right? In terms of having the enough. bigger record. Because I didn't know Not Like Us was coming. It's good. But it wasn't good enough. That <laughs> it's like it's that Jada Kiss. I'm clip, trying right? to tell you. It's wasn't that the good. same? Wait, wait, wait. Wasn't Family? Didn't he drop Family Matters and then Kendrick dropped like five Grams. minutes after? Yeah, yeah. that was when Meet the Grams came okay, out. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, see, so, see, like so before that's all of that, yeah, I was like, why, oh yeah, because because everybody I, thought that. I, I just I just heard the vigor and I heard the mm -hmm. energy. Niggas yeah. was happy, and he had he, he had a bar in it. I tweeted all the time that little Kim bar, where he talked about. um the the mm, the skim mm. uh uh three oh, three uh, separate albums this and I just did the cam to it nigga skim through it hard ah! <laughs> like, that's my shit like I love when rappers go to, you know what I mean like yeah. um and yeah I mean it's it's so crazy how how Kendrick cleaned up after that but yeah I, I was really just enjoying it the man it's, it's like you know somebody made a great point in terms of asking you know how big is this versus like. Jay Z versus Nas, or maybe you know, uh, uh, um, uh, Fifty Cent and Cameron, and and some of the older stuff like N.W.A. things of that nature. You know, um, somebody made a great point. Like, even when those battles were happening, the responses weren't coming in five minutes later. Exactly, gangster. Yeah, yeah. Like, gangster. That was nuts. unlike anything you. That's like Beyonce and Rihanna going 
like it, like song for song over the mm. weekend. Like the biggest artists in the genre, in the sport is like LeBron and KD Things doing one on one at the Olympics. Like you've never seen that in your life. So I just enjoyed that from like just a historic perspective. It's just yeah. like, bro, like you had the number one and the number two guy, like unquestionably. The yeah. way how like how happy people were going when right at each other dropped, and then to see people lose it right when yeah beat the Grams yeah. drop was crazy. It was like watching Game of Thrones or something. Right, shit, bro. it was nuts. <laughs> right, it was like <laughs> it was literally like last night's episode. Like if if, if y'all watch Game of Thrones, it was like last night's episode, bro. I don't. It was nuts, bro. But, it was um, one of the best episodes I ever seen in my life. Yeah, no, I was. <laughs> I, I definitely felt vindicated for that forty five minutes, and then I was like, ah, shit. yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, shit. Nah, when not like us. I, 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 yo, I will never forget hearing "Not Like Us" for the first time when he said when, when I first heard the A minor line. <laughs> bro, my apartment is only six hundred sixty square feet. I promise you, I streak through every inch of it. <laughs> I just came out the shower. I ain't gonna count. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was just like, <laughs> okay. you know, you know how some shit had because it's not even, it's not even, it wasn't even necessarily joy or jubilee. It was just like pandemonium. Yeah, it was like, like oh, I shit. felt like my apartment could not contain my and my excitement for this yeah. moment. Like, I, I I do the same thing when the Jets win. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, man. I just run wall to wall with? until I run out of energy. <laughs> um, so that that's how I felt about that, man. It was just like, like I could not believe. Um, I could not believe we were getting that. Like, yeah. like no, you know how people one. say, "Wow, thank God I was alive for Michael Jordan." It's mm-hmm. like, thank God I was alive for that. Yeah. That was incredible. No, absolutely agree, absolutely agree. And I think you know, as much as 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 exhausted as I may be in the narratives and all that, like I, I I did enjoy it. I I do still listen to a good amount of the songs that came out of it. So you know, it's you gotta take the good with the bad, much like you must do with hip hop mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. as big as it is. Um, and so yeah, completely agree. So. I don't know what the next chapter of this will be. Um, what do you think it should be? Because I, th- I think a lot about this uh, from Drake's perspective. Like Kendrick is easier because he's you know the the winner the winner decides the spoils. However that that saying goes, but if if you if you because I, I saw a tweet about this, I didn't mean to derail. You know, <laughs> I saw a tweet where somebody um, claimed to be a, a PR expert or mm-hmm. something like that, and they said this would be my five step process for Drake, and it was so bad. I was like, there's no way you're a PR expert. Like, you really think donating money to comp and charities mm. is what someone who just mocked that entire region should be doing? Yeah. Like, are you serious? It, it would look very bad. But the tweet itself got me thinking and just asking people around me, like, you know, how, like, what is his path through this where he can kind of have that, like, Nas, like, is good? era where it's like you definitively lost mm-hmm. and you got stomped on and continue to probably get stomped on through Grammy season through da da mm-hmm. but then you're gonna have this moment where like everyone's rooting for you again how does he get there I think ultimately the biggest thing and I think why it was so easy for him to get barrage like this and also for people to consensus pick Kendrick is that people were just tired of Drake bro like mm-hmm. think about the last Four years. Mm-hmm. 2020, we get Dark Lane demo tapes. Make it a second. slide on that. 2021, we get Certified Lover Tusi Boy. fucking slide. Um, he also dropped Scary Hours 3 that year, too. Scary Hours 2 that year. 2022, we get Honestly Nevermind and um, fucking Her Loss. Last year, we got For All the Dogs, and he said he was taking a break, then he dropped the Deluxe, and then he went on tour. Um, so it's just like he's been so present, and I, the narrative has shifted with his, the subject matter of his music. People feel like he's not making music for, for women anymore. So there's there's been a, there's been a narrative turn. His numbers are still high. His tours still sell out. But narrative wise, people were looking. People were like, Kendrick really gave niggas the alley oop to be like, yo, I really don't need to fuck with this nigga no more. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just really what people feel. And so I, I truly think him taking a break, like, don't rap for the rest of this year. To, to take a break, <laughs> um, I, I think really take some time to get over your, your, your pride, your ego, and your, and your hubris. And get vulnerable on this next project. Like I, I think people are really looking for storytelling and introspection, and, and he gives that. Like, but I think, I think him really sitting with himself, thinking about how he feels, describing this experience, thinking about ways he messed up, and like he he don't gotta make a song saying like, oh yeah, I shouldn't have did that, I shouldn't do that, but just like really just like sitting and examining himself because he's. His whole career, he's gotten so big because he's related to us so well. And this moment, none of us can relate to getting barraged by the second biggest rapper in the world. 
So like you, you got to really like find a way to describe that and like make us feel that. Um, and yeah, I think he's, he's just got to make the best music that he's ever made. You know, mm. I've, again, I've, I've enjoyed everything the last couple of years, but like critical acclaim wise and all that, like people haven't. And so I, I think he, he's gotta, he's gotta bring an album. He's gotta make the first undeniable album that he's made since like, I want, I want to say like, yeah, if you're reading this, like that, the, that run of take care, nothing was the same to if you're reading this, like. I feel like those were mostly loved and then views was polarizing and it's just been polarizing ever yeah, since yeah he he's got I don't, obviously he can't get back into a bag that he was in 10 years ago but at this stage of his career make something that you you're giving more of yourself you're making good music because you can make the hits like you give you can give something for everyone but be more focused and like i don't want to say like grow up or mature but like I don't really know what the word I'm looking for is, but just like. How'd you feel about him laughing at uh, mm -hmm. him laughing at uh, the Rick Ross shit? And like, is that something where he's like grow up and mature a little bit? Because I seen a lot of people kind of saying that too. Like, it's like, I don't know. I seen, I seen people say that though. And I seen that, that situation of Rick Ross and them. Yeah. They, yeah, that was bad. But, yeah, Ross was kind of corny through this whole thing. Yeah, thing, of course. To be honest, like mm -hmm. he he really inserted himself. Yeah, like a lot of people inserted himself in versus Drake. Yeah. That's why, like we we talk about who's sick of him. Like, bro, a lot of people are sick of him. Yeah, bro. and a it's of, like, well, what do you think is gonna happen when you come to my home country <laughs> and you play this diss song about me, <laughs> and there are parasocial nuts fans? Like, well, what do you think is gonna yeah. happen? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Got touched. Maybe Drake shouldn't have liked it. Like it's it's like when those kids uh fucked around with Joe Budden and like Drake followed them. Like you don't want to do stuff like that <laughs> because if something happens, then you can get maybe legally yeah. implicated. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I'm not surprised he called himself the Petty King. That's what yeah. he does. Oh, yeah. Like that's, that's and and Ross was that. really bombing on him. Like it, it wasn't mm -hmm. Ross wasn't effective, but like mm -hmm. besides <laughs> I think he coined BBL Drizzy, which, you know, then yeah, took yeah. off. But, like, Ross <laughs> oh, Ross has really that. just been, like, an annoying gnat. Like, yeah, nigga, yeah, get the fuck yeah. out of here. Like, you swat him away, <laughs> he keeps coming back, like, stuff like that. So I, Yeah, I didn't really enjoy Ross's contributions to this, honestly. Yeah. I still actually never even listened to yeah. To this day, I haven't heard his, Drake his, champion, his, moments his champion moments. It was um, I think... Um, for me, for me, the Drake thing, I I, I like this to when um when when Ye ran down on Taylor Swift at the VMAs, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. it just in 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 the sense of like just how generally hated and kind of like this general disdain exists for him. Yeah, and I remember when Ye came back into the public eye, he had done this this forty page like takeover of XXL magazine, and, and he 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 was sharing about the night Most Def came to his house and and just kind of yanked him out of there and was like, you got to snap out of it. Yeah. Um, but he said it, it. It didn't happen a day too soon. Like it was the it was the right moment. Like had he showed up the week before, he probably would never open the door. The week after, he might not open the door. But it was that one week where it was just like, okay, it's time. Mm -hmm. And I, I I'd like for Drake to kind of like to your point, just kind of look within and let that time present itself. Yeah, it feels like he's trying to detract from the merits of the beef at this point. Like you know, laughing at Ross and. You know, laughing making with, that, laughing with his baby mama too. Laughing, that was funny. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, that, that was nice. funny as fuck. Like, dude, like, yo, they crazy. Just, as just, hell. just on a, you know, my my mother always used to tell me like, crazy you know, you, you are the sum of the people around you. Like, yeah. just, just in a vacuum, like Drake, why are you talking to Tia, dog? Like, <laughs> like she's, you know what I mean? Like, she yeah. clearly exists as an agent of chaos, which yeah. is really not what you need at this point. He's trying and to I, get like any small cheap victory. That's what I'm saying. And I'm like, that's you that's keep that's trying it. to get these cheap victories, you're gonna dig yourself a bigger hole. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, like, like we talked about earlier, I don't remember if we were uh, if we were live or not, but, you know, people, the, the, I think the, the, the notion that Drake is going to be needed, people are going to need to hear from him, mm -hmm. I think that's unequivocally true. Like, yeah. I, I can't imagine a world in which this is just it for him. It, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, and his, his fan base is just too vast, too diversified, and, and honestly just, just too vigorous yeah. um, for that to be the case. So with that in your back pocket, it's like, all right, what are you going to give him when it's time? Mm -hmm. Because, yes, this is not the end at all. But, like, at the same time, your next move has to be your best move. Yeah. Um, you're not going to get two, three, four chances to come out and be like, okay, guys, I'm ready. Like, the game will have moved on. It happens to everybody. Yeah. And, you know, people forget, like, 
in this age of, you know, omnipresent this and, you know, social media this, like, remember when Jay retired for the first time after Black <clears throat> Album? Mm-hmm. His career had been seven years to that point. Mm. That's it. And everyone, like, unless you were, you know, maybe the generation prior and you weren't willing to let go of the Biggie baton, you were fine with that. Like, I remember MTV News uh, published, like, an official, like, declaration that Jay-Z had risen to the status of the greatest rapper of all time. Seven years. Drake has been out for 15, right? So it can happen. It can happen to you. Yeah. Um, and if he's not careful, it's going to happen quicker than he thinks. Because, right, like, you know, if I was him, like, talking about the universal bloat in the streams, I even saw academics come out and say that he talked to his, his person at Spotify who apparently told him that there were no inflation yeah, in the streams. Yeah, I, I don't that. know whether or not to believe that. Academics is the worst source that I could possibly go to for that, in my opinion. But I just think it says something that this person that was previously a vessel for you in this battle is now speaking truth to power against you. Yeah. So there's just a lot of different currents, I think, that should be pushing Drake ashore. Like, he really just needs to, like, I mean, he's always talking about his house. Like, go live in it. Yeah, bro. Like, sure. go live in it. Like, skip the white party. <laughs> Fuck Houston. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I was very surprised to see him at the white party. Like, but... In off white, yeah, yeah, and but we saw pictures of like him being embraced, like he, he was hanging out with little baby and fabulous. And granted, like they they not West Coast niggas, so it's like, but it's clear those are that his they're too. Like, <laughs> so what? Those are his henchmen too. Like. Little baby, Trav, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Fab, not so much. He didn't work with Fab in forever, but right, like, right, right. You know, it's 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 cool to it's cool to see like narrative wise, he's still embraced by people, and it's not shocking because I think if. Baby or Travis want to get hot. They're, they're calling Drake for that verse still. That's what I'm saying. Like, they, like regardless. They, they know who they're going to need yeah. to go to do their bidding at some point. Yeah. So that's just the reality of the of the situation. But yeah, man, um, that's that. Another episode of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Brother Kerry, we want to thank you so much oh, thank for coming God, through, man. man. Bring, in, bring in the perspectives. This bring... was hella fun. That was three hours? Uh, two, two and a half. You Almost two and a half. <laughs> almost two and a half. I could have went two more, man. Yeah, I, I know. Like... I know, bro. I, I, I had to cut it. That's like, we almost running over time. But, Yo, listen, but it was just, the convo was that good, for real. Like, um, like, so you're always welcome back, man. Listen, man, I appreciate it. And I think what you guys are doing here is just extremely important. Um, and, and that's, that's what really made me want to jump to it, whether, you know, Deb was here or not, like, yeah. um, you know, just meaningful conversations about this thing that we hold so dear, like that they matter. You yeah. know what I mean? So just keep it up. Absolutely, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. And Love. so for myself, for our steam guest host, Carrie, and of course for the guy, Will, we want y'all to stay safe, stay humble, stay busy. Stay dangerous though, too. That's too. <laughs> <laughs>